It's time for Mac Break Weekly. Renee's here. Andy's here. Heather Kelly joins us from the Washington Post. We're going to talk about the Apple car. Is it just a big advertising vehicle? Those new augmented reality glasses. How real is that rumor? And how the Apple Watch might help you diagnose COVID-19 a week early. It's all coming up next on Mac Break Weekly. Podcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. This is Mac Break Weekly, episode 752. Recorded Tuesday, February 9th, 2021. Worcester Man. This episode of Mac Break Weekly is brought to you by Casper. You deserve a fresh start this year. Reset your rest with supremely comfortable mattresses, bedding, and more from Casper. Go to casper.com slash MacBreak and use the code MacBreak for $100 off select mattresses. And by ExpressVPN. ExpressVPN is ridiculously fast. You can stream everything in HD quality with zero buffering. For three extra months free with a one-year package, go to expressvpn.com slash MacBreak. It's time for MacBreak Weekly, the show where we talk about the latest Apple news. And I'm thrilled to have Heather Kelly joining us. She is a technology reporter at the Washington Post, a legend in the industry, worked at CNN for more than a decade. And uh, it's so nice. I think this is your first time. Have you been on any of our shows ever? I I have. Oh, I have. Tech you and News I, Weekly. we've done this before. You and I? Yeah. I apologize. It's okay. I am terrible. <laughs> I am so sorry. I have a thing that's a real thing, but it sounds made up, called, I think it's apo, aponosia. I can't, or apophate, I can't remember what it is, because I can't. But uh, I recognize, I do, faces go away. I don't I don't see faces. Aphasia? It's not aphasia. It's, yeah. um, Aphasia anyway. is a speech thing. Yeah. Yeah, it's like it's like aphasia for faces. <laughs> anyway, it's a lousy excuse. Heather, I apologize. Welcome. It's good to have you. Uh, thanks for joining us. Andy Anako, also here from the WGBH in Boston, Boston Public Radio. Good to see you, Andrew. And he's wearing his good Mac World 2002 shirt. Yep, there you go. It's 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 almost like a badge that yes, I've survived in this industry for now 19 years, or at least that they haven't gotten around to getting. I feel like that was yet. last year. I am I I'm living in a time warp, I guess. Yeah, but this is but the thing is like it's uh, I'm joking, but like this this shirt has become like comfort food this year, because you know there there's certain items of clothing that when you put you've had them for so long, you have so many memories associated with them that even if they're not even if it's not like the fuzzy sweater, it's like oh I've had this like for two decades and through really great times and I had a good time there and like oh okay good and yeah so even though it's like it's a little bit threadbare and I probably <laughs> can't wear it out anymore because I don't want to tear. It. It's like okay, I'm in my Mac. Everything's Those okay. I'm days. in my Mac World 2000. Was that the shirt. last one? No, no, no not, not by no. a long shot. Okay, this is Pasta the word. What? Say it again. Prosopagnosia. That's it. You know, it's not Heather talking. Huh? It's me. Prosopagnosia. Prosopagnosia. Oh, it's face blindness. The inability to recognize the faces of familiar people. I just thought I'd. That's the chat room came up with that. They're amazing that way. <laughs> In fact, the chat room is really, uh, it's, it's your fault. You should have said, you know, Heather, she, this is what the Apple glasses are going to do. You know, Heather, she was on Twitch 78 and, uh, and also Renee Ritchie, youtube.com slash Renee Ritchie. Hello, Renee. I've, I've been here before too, Leo. Who are you? Many times. What are you doing here? And you Why would be. Why are you in my house? <laughs> it's getting that way. Pretty soon it's going to be that way. That's how I Who feel. are all these people that keep showing up on Tuesdays? 2020, uh, we can forgive anything, Leo. Anything. So I guess this is going to lead us into the Apple AR uh, conversation because that actually is a perfect application for somebody with whatever that is, propagandosia. Uh, I happens to me all the time. It would be wonderful if the glasses, I could see a heads-up display and it would say, oh, yeah, this is... You. Yeah, Siri will tell you. Siri will tell you exactly who it is. So the rumors uh, have been stepped up another notch. The information with an exclusive saying they're going to be $3,000. Uh, one of the interesting things about the information's story is it did not have a top of headband. It just was around your head. And uh, kind of like uh, nerdy glasses with 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 a croaky, and um, 
that led to speculation that maybe they're not as heavy as as they used to be or whatever. The, apparently the information saw I some they saw not either saw the glasses or saw a rendering of the glasses and then had to make their own rendering to avoid giving away anything. Mm. Swappable headbands, eye tracking anywhere from 12 to 8, 12 to 18 uh, cameras, dual 8K displays. Uh, it, they, they're mixed reality because uh, you can't see through them. Uh, so they're more like VR, but because they have cameras, you can see a project, you can see a video of what you're looking, walking around at and looking at. And then it's superimposed on that, I guess, other things. Uh, according to the, in, the information said they viewed internal Apple images of a late stage prototype from last year and then did their own artist's rendering. Pegatron will be manufacturing them, according again to the information. Um, and perhaps, there it is, there's the rendering. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah the, the, the back of that does look pretty substantial, like what you'd have if you either, A, it was desperately important to have the tightest possible fit against the face, or if this thing was so heavy that uh, you just wanted to make sure it didn't shift. Heather, you try a lot of, uh, you know, stuff like this. I'm really not bullish on VR at all. Do you think this is something that, that people want? I mean, if it hasn't taken off, I would say during a pandemic, which is like the perfect <laughs> use case for it, to like feel like I'm there with you guys. But I don't I don't actually want to be there with you guys. I'm no. happy just looking at you on my camera. Yeah. It's fine. Ho but in holo this is more like a HoloLens. But so the HoloLens is... It's it's very cool to use. It's always like, oh wow, we're doing this, and then I, I just haven't found like a really good use case for it. Maybe in the enterprise job training, but that's not Apple's niche. I just noticed you have a black hole in your office. That's pretty cool. Where'd you get that? It's over your right left shoulder. It, uh, isn't that isn't that a gravitational <laughs> field distortion distortion of a? Isn't that maybe I'm wrong on that? It could be just a chair, a wireframe model of a gravitational well. Yeah. It's it's a fancy little chair, I think. That's awesome. <laughs> Just tell people that. that's my black hole. Yeah, I keep it here. <laughs> um, of course, of course, when you're streaming, you have to keep it in wireframe mode so the high poly <laughs> count doesn't drop the frame rate. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. Code named N301. This is one of two. There'll be another one more like what Apple's trying to do, according to Mark Gurman, um, in uh, a year after that, maybe next year for this. Um. Credible, Renee. I think they're very. I think they're very different products, though. I think you know we, we're compounding them together because the special projects group that's working on them is sharing very similar technologies, and they have, in some ways, a lot of overlap. But I think the way Apple is looking at the VR headset or the XR, I can't keep up with the acronyms. Mixed, you know, all these types of reality things is that this is going to be an escalation, like a premium escalation of the Apple TV, where it's going to be heavily focused on entertainment products, like. You know, you can watch a movie and make it feel like you're in IMAX theater. Also gaming, the likes of which we've seen on the Oculus system and on uh, the Vive system with Steam, all those sorts of yeah, things. Yeah, but come on, Renee, like you want to play Pokemon MK Ultra in the real world wearing these glasses. That'll be for the glasses. Like, that's why I think these are much more geared towards what an Apple TV does today, just a much more expensive version that people will pay much more for. And, and even like things like Fitness Plus, you could do that on the top of a, of a mountain somewhere. And then the glasses will be more like an Apple Watch, a wearable that doesn't have the same, like the the VR glasses, they can have a full M2 series processor in them, cooled faster than any MacBook right now. But the glasses, they really can't. They're going to have like a system in package the way that the Apple Watch does. And they're going to provide similar wearable, glanceable sort of data that'll be much more helpful in brief bits throughout the day, but not like the dedicated firepower you'd strap to your head. <laughs> Wayne, uh, Mon, uh, Alex Heath, who write for the information say, Remind us, and it's easy to forget that in 2017, Apple acquired a company, a company that specialized in turning the video from a camera into a, a heads-up display. So that would not be a surprise that they included that. I don't like uh, VR very much because I, I'm, I'm paranoid. I feel like somebody's going to sneak up behind me. I don't like being isolated. <laughs> from the world around me. I feel like Just that's Lisa, Leo. That's a vulnerable. Well, that's my wife, but <laughs> <laughs> yes. You never know. She could have a frying pan. I don't know. So I just, I don't like, I mean, it's facetious. And nobody's going to sneak up behind me. I just don't like the fact that you're completely disconnected from the world yeah. around you. Also, also the weight of that thing 
as illustrated, it does imply the use case for this is going isn't going to be you wear it all day long and it's your personal assistant. It implies you're going to wear this for an hour while you're doing your training or while you're trying to get this engine put together, uh, or why you why you need uh, documentation in front of you, uh, or while you're playing this this game and then take it right off again. Heather, I mean, clearly Microsoft intends Hololens as more of a productivity tool, even though they showed they showed Minecraft in it. Uh, is Apple going after productivity or 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 entertainment or something different? I, I like Renee's vision of it being used for Apple Plus. Although, I mean, the biggest problem we still have with, with these things is how much people get violently ill using them. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> until you fix that, I can't imagine actually adding like yoga moves to it or anything. Um, Air Force, but, the Air Force, which does a lot of this in simulators training. Uh, has done many studies, and they call it simulation sickness, and they say 11% of the population is susceptible to simulation sickness. Nobody's sure what it is. The, the, if, I think the folks at Oculus take the optimistic in, interpretation that, oh, it's it's just a matter of of lag when you turn your head. we got to get the lag down. we got to get the, the pixel count higher. The resolution the higher, resolution. Yeah, AK. I think that's over-optimistic. Uh, I've read another take. Um, actually, by the famous uh, film editor um, Walter Murch, who said, "No, no, no, that's not the problem. It's a, it's something intractable. It's a biological problem. The difference between the convergence of your eyes, which your brain uses to estimate dif distance, where your focus converges, and um, I can't remember what the other one is, but there's another way you perceive distance. Yeah, those are supposed to match if they don't, right? Because if something is there, it should be there." But when you're, the convergence of your eyes doesn't match the focal length of the, of the object in front of you, your brain says, you ate some bad mushrooms. You should throw <laughs> up now. And, uh, and so that's more intractable. You can't really fix that. Those screens are right here. So you're focusing on something this, you know, inches away. And yet the object you're focusing on appears to be, and your, uh, your, your, your brain is saying 10 feet away, that mismatch is... It's something I don't know how, if you can fix it. Uh, although, if anybody could fix it, I guess it would be Apple. <laughs> <laughs> New brain implants or something. I don't know. Yeah. Do you get sick, Heather, when you wear those? I don't, but my husband does. Yeah. He gets annoyed when I keep bringing them home to test. Yes. Like, I get okay. it's uh, I I get nauseous, but after or nauseated, but after a, a length of time, like at first, it's like, oh, this is really cool. I'm having so much fun, and then, you know, you kind of <laughs> a little bit later. You kind of feel a little weird. That's why I also like when they conflate VR with the screen, like you're, fl you're, fl I can fly an X-wing. That's fine. But if the X-wing starts doing spins that I'm not doing, that breaks the VR experience. And that's what really annoys me when they stick to the pure VR experience. I'm yeah, playing. that's classic car sickness where your body's saying one thing and your eyes yes. are saying another thing. Um, so it's a, probably it's a combination of a bunch of uh, different yeah. issues. But the, it's possible that the use case that they're planning for this, or the people they're trying to sell this to, that's not going to be an issue. Um, I was I was very, very intrigued. I came across uh, what might be the first commercial wearable computer or mixed reality computer. It was made by Rockwell in 1996. It was called oh, wow. the Trekker. The Trekker. And, wow. Yeah. And, the, and it, it looks ridiculous because, again, 1996 technology, you're, you're basically wearing – a shoebox on your on a special like belt, uh, and you've got this <laughs> again old timey like CRT type viewfinder like on, on a big big halo on your uh, on your head. But the the point was, if you read the press materials that they released with it when they were trying to when they were announcing it, <laughs> the market for training for people who are uh, who are just uh, maintaining helicopters in the military, maintaining air, airplanes is so big that if you just make this one device that yeah there it is, if you just make this one device that makes it easy for pe for uh, a, a, a person in maintenance to have one eye on procedures and documentation or put a second pair of eyes on what they're doing that could be in low volume a very lucrative product by the way i found it on ebay for only yeah, that, 897 dollars and, and i don't if i had 897 dollars that i did not want to spend on something more productive it's like ooh, i i did i did right click and save all the photos because i kind of want to build it's one a of piece those of history just, so this started. But, but, who was the guy at MIT who was wearing this around for the longest time? All I, all I remember is his last Wasn't name Sir is Gabriel? Mann, Professor Mann. Yeah, and, that's, and, yeah. and that was one of the. He, he really, really took it to the next level. But that's one of the things that always I always come back to whenever I whenever I have to think about 
a wearable like that that is designed to be worn all the time because he's been doing he's been wearing these things since he was an undergrad. He was like one of the founda founders of this technology. Uh, and when you see him like walking around with this and all the different video, all the different interviews, there's always video of I'm going to take off my glasses so you can sort of see what I'm talking about. He's always like, yeah, yeah. You know, his tongue a little bit off to the yeah. side because Steve he's, man. Too, he's immersed in, yeah, Steve yeah, Man, thank Steve you very man. much. Here's the picture. Um, this is what the Air Force, by the way, here's a bunch of, the, <laughs> this is the <laughs> triumph of the nerds, clearly. This is from, <laughs> I think, 1997. The, uh, <laughs> just a lot of Yeah, That is a great a picture. A lot of dark trench coats. There's something <laughs> about this picture. These guys, look at this guy on the left. Uh, these guys, they, they represent the future. So the, one of the things the Air Force noted is if, if you suffer simulation sickness, you then there is this disconnect with reality when you get out of the simulator that can take as long as 24 hours. And they recommended that if you suffer from simulation sickness, you not attempt to drive a vehicle for at least a day. Now, what could possibly go wrong? <laughs> I well, the think cars are driving themselves. Leo, this that's is the why argument. Things are working at concert. This is the argument for augmented reality. I'm not sure the Apple style where you have a camera. I think you want to see the real world because then you're yeah. then you're kind of at least grounded in something real and your focal length and your convergence match. How do I fight zombies? I mean, that's the whole <laughs> point of this is to fight zombies. Uh, I like this guy who has put an antenna on his hat. You know, he's uh, bigger than like, all of us now. <laughs> yes, Whatever probably. Probably, yeah. I is that Google it. Glass on the right? Is that the first version of Google nope, Glass nope. on the right? This is all predates all of 96, that. Ninety six. Yeah. But but speaking of Google Glass, that, that is something I come back to. That I I I don't think that's, that uh, a, a good marketable version of mixed reality necessarily has to be this sort of immersive. Hey, look, there's a there's a cartoon fox on the sidewalk in front of you. He's, when he flicks his tail and turns to the left, that means that that's where you're supposed to go to find uh, to, to find the restaurant you're going to. I did. Uh, I I do own uh, Google Glass. Uh, I am a veteran of the Explorer program. I don't like to flaunt that, but it is true. Uh -huh. uh, and I, and I was wearing it because I, I was really interested in the technology. So I was wearing it regularly uh, uh, for for a couple of months, and I really liked the idea of all it was was kind of like a tiny little postage stamp screen that was kind of up in your field of view that was totally dark if you weren't looking if you didn't do anything with it. But when you uh, when you made a request through voice, that's how you interacted with things visually. And I have to say that I really did enjoy it. I really did use it a lot by just take on my daily constitutionals, being able to take a walk and have an idea and being able to add, add a note to something or ask a question and get a response that is not necessarily going to interfere with what I'm, I don't have to take my hands off of a off of a I don't, I don't put my hands on a on a device in order to do it. So uh, obviously the Google Glass was, as they said, just an experiment. Right now, it is. I think they're, they're, they are. They do have an enterprise edition right now that they're trying to have some success with. But we don't necessarily have to have the animated fox. Apple could make something that's very, very interesting. That's simply like Siri, plus <laughs> plus your field of view. Actually, S Steve Mann, who who started all this when he was in high school, he wired a sixty five hundred two computer into a steel frame backpack to control flash bulbs. Flash bulbs. Remember those kids? Cameras yeah. and other photographic systems. The display was a camera viewfinder CRT attached to a helmet, giving him 40 column text. The input was from seven micro switches built into the handle of the flash lamp oh. that he was holding. The entire system was powered by, get ready for this, lead acid batteries. That's <laughs> yep. a big fanny pack. That's a. <laughs> <laughs> the pre, pre Those tiny days. packs make so much sense now. <laughs> this man is still involved in all of this. In fact, uh, there's a picture of him on Wikipedia wearing something very similar to Google Glass. It's called no the relation to Merlin. I tap. I don't know. I wouldn't. He's currently CTO and co-founder at Blueberry X Technologies in Toronto. Canadian engineer. He's, wow. ca he's Canadian. Mm. So, Steve, if you're out there, I'd love to hear from you, and you could tell us uh, what you're up to. Something involving, <laughs> I don't know, trails, apparently. Blueberry, not Blackberry, you said, right? Blueberry, like not company Blackberry. Company separate. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, You know, I, I think I'm excited by the idea of augmented reality. We, had, we were talking about this on Twitter on Sunday, and um, Owen Thomas of the Chronicle said, you know, it's not going to be glasses. It's going to be a more advanced version of the AirPods. Yes. That, that it's going to be an audio interface. That kind of makes sense. That doesn't make you queasy. 
Yeah. Unless you're using Motorola, a Nickelback, but that's another problem entirely. Motorola had a really great product called the Hint that was sort of like a single I had a Hint. Yeah. Right. That came and with a Moto a X. Yeah. Exactly. And all you had to do was tap on it and ask questions. It would, it would answer questions back to you. That idea of just simply being a conduit, a voice conduit between yourself and all of the features of your phone, uh, and also the ability to for this thing to deliver proactive notifications, such as turn right over here, or oh, by the way, your 10 20 uh, meeting has been rescheduled to, to, to noon. That's the sort of and all that sort of stuff is very significant. And also the fact that the hint, unlike the AirPod, was designed to be you can't you can't even see people wearing them because it really did like snug into the canal very, very well. And that's kind of like the perfect expression of this technology. It was a flop. I think it does, but I think it was battery yeah. life, as I remember. The battery was uh, you couldn't get a very yeah. good battery in that little thing. I seem to remember. Heather, if I bought this vintage wearable Rockwell Com headwear computer and you and just gave it to you to take home and to tell your husband hey this is the newest thing do you think do i get the outfit to go with get it? the whole thing you get the fanny pack you yeah. get the outfit you get the whole thing in fact just wear it and say honey this is uh i love this thing and and someday we're all going to be wearing these <laughs> Get used to I this mean, face, I can afford a divorce. Sure. <laughs> he wouldn't leave you over that. <laughs> he wouldn't leave you over that. No, that's a, that's a good joke. April Fools will do that. Actually, this is from an estate sale. Oh, yeah. that's depressing. I hope that's not the cause of their demise. <laughs> Or, or maybe that's how the how the person got killed. They were, they had yeah, that's what she's saying. Yeah, I, they, walk, I, they walked into a pool and they got pulled down. It's by like the, the president of Segway who drove it off a cliff. It's just you know sometimes these technologies are just too dangerous. I'm I'm gonna frame. I'm gonna print this and frame it. I'm <laughs> I'm putting this picture from 1996 MIT. Can I can I, can I, I tell I you? I want to know that, where every single guy is right now. Yeah, yep. a little update on them. Do you all. think? Do you think? Okay, how many of them are billionaires now? All of them. All of them. <laughs> yeah. It's amazing. It's an amazing story. Uh, and we the are masters now, Leo. It is not the, simulation. It is not the only new product from Apple. We're going to talk in a minute about uh, well, the the <laughs> strange story of Hyundai Kia. Oh, can I ask you something before we move on, Leo? Yes. So I got to be part of the clubhouse room uh, right after that article went live where everyone was discussing this. And you got to see just like Facebook people there and people interested in the Apple version and Google version and all of that. And one of the discussions that came up is who's going to own the advertising space in AR and VR, uh, oh, sort of God. like the wild west of the Internet. And like, will you go to pick up your child at school? And if you're wearing like the Google or Facebook version of this, will you see a giant oh. ad over the school? Oh. Or if you're using the Amazon version, will you walk into your bathroom and it'll go, oh, the toilet paper is low. That is a we added an extra scenario. version to your cart. Oh. Because like people are already arguing over over rain rights, over sky rights, like who owns the physical world? Never who's gonna own the virtual world? Speaking of clubhouse. But we've been we've been worried about that coming to, you know, Siri and Alexa. And it hasn't really happened yet. I mean, sometimes my Alexa gets a little chatty and tries to sell me something and I yell <laughs> at it. But like I feel I feel like maybe there will be some boundaries for that's a while. That's my worst. That's the worst experience. With, it's the same thing with Google Home, where after you give it a command, it says, oh, and by the way, and you just want to go, oh, you yeah, don't want to know by the way. Just, yeah, when Siri tells me where her weather data comes from, it makes me angry enough. I, I can't even imagine know. that. Stop talking. It's like, like having a friend who got into like a multi-level marketing program for essential oils <laughs> or something. Yeah. Oh, by Andy, the way, you look a little bit to sell the AR? <laughs> Andy, oh. will you get to sell the AR rights to your inside your house or will some company who made your glasses own the AR rights to that? Well, this is actually going to tie into the car because that was the other thing we were talking about the car. And Mike Elgin said, you know what? The reason Apple's interested in a car is not because it's a vehicle to get around in, but because it's a content consumption device. And, yes. and in fact, we've mm. seen many companies, including Google, test, you know, where the ads show up and, and you know, as... They, they see this as like the, a subway with its uh, there's ads all over audience. the inside of the car. Uh, no, I mean for, for Ford. Ford just uh, reached a huge deal with uh, Google to have all of its uh, in dash computers uh, be based on the Android operating system. That is how you. That is how you get a, get awareness of uh, of advertising environments inside of cars. You don't have to buy a hundred. You don't have to sell a hundred thousand dollar car just to sell a few ads. Yeah. I don't. I don't understand. I don't understand the argument. I'm not saying it's wrong. I'm just saying I don't understand it. Here's my assertion and all that. That app and you guys correct me if I'm wrong. 
Apple is not in the business of computing or cars or headsets. Apple is in the business of creating experiences that people will subscribe to, pay for, ultimately pay for, and then ultimately subscribe to. And so what they're looking at is just different vehicles for distributing these experiences that they can charge you for. And I, that, I, it makes sense to me that they would see a car as that, not so much as a... That's literally the cook doctrine, right? Like to deliver highly differentiated uh, products that consumers find add value to their lives. Yeah. And you charge them for the bright box and now you charge them for the... the and I'm the, taking uh, to the next level. going into the bright box. Saying they need to understand yeah. what their business is, which is not making computers... They, they, I think they understand that. They took computer out of the name. But making experiences uh, and vehicles for distributing those experiences. And and then it kind of all makes, it all fits together. It all makes sense. It's just another another screen, in effect. Just so, so Horace Dedia so would energy. argue that we don't use cars enough for that. Like he thinks the average person is only going to use a car for about yeah. an hour. So it only makes sense as a distributed yeah. platform. Yeah, it might be a flop. Yeah. Well, certainly personal ownership of automobiles. Or a fleet. A terrible yeah. idea. Terrible yeah. idea. Most cars yeah, that, that, are used, you know, a tiny fraction of the day. Yeah, uh, that, that's an excellent point. I do, I do think that uh, it's hard for me to get off the idea that when Apple does something, one of the factors is always the, the thought, well, how can we move the needle on this? Meaning that if, uh, not only to, not just from the lofty, oh, we're here to we're here to change the world and help humanity, but also that we can't compete with. Uh, any commodity manufacturer, any any manufacturer who makes the thing that is cheap, affordable, works well enough for, for almost every people, we can't compete with that kind of business model. We can compete on the idea of we're building something that is the next thing and also uh, uh, oh. redefines the redefines <laughs> the category. I don't, I don't, I'm not sure how – so when I think about how Apple might be getting into a car, I keep thinking about, well, what are they going to do? What, one of the answers is – uh, we're gonna. They're going to be doing something that is a little bit more ambitious. That tries to reduce the number of cars on the road and make sure that more of the ones that are doing like public service uh, are running Apple software. But I can't. It's it's uh, it's a it's health hard product. For me to imagine it's a health product. Well, uh, well with a treadmill inside <laughs> that runs the that, that runs the Siri. Inside. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. Uh, actually, there's a rebuttal to your assertion, Renee, or Har or Haras yes. Dediu's assertion. Uh, Reverb Mike says. Then why are there urinal ads? <laughs> I don't. Heather probably has no experience of this, but there must be ads in ladies' rooms too. I don't know. They're it, they're. All, oh, I thought you meant ads for urinals. Not for like, urinals. <laughs> oh. Above urinals, <laughs> in places Captain like Vegas, audience. there's ads everywhere. You can't in the men's room. I don't know where they. I mean, any Amazon employee can tell you that there's ads everywhere telling you. Is that true? In a union, yeah, they've been they've been plastering workers. Saying back. don't unionize. Yeah, like you don't know where your dues are going. Oh, my God. Because you can't escape an ad in a bathroom. And you, you probably can't escape oh, an ad in a car. in the car. Same thing. Yeah, captive audience. Or in a headset. Captive audience. Yeah, that's like, the I think one of the reasons you don't use it. You don't Oculus. use a restroom every, you know, a lot. Well, one hopes. <laughs> but, but, you know, uh, you're probably spending as much time in your auto as you are uh, in a rest. Actually, our commutes like longer and longer and longer. The average commute now is something like 45 minutes. Well, in here, it's the tech companies that are making those commutes longer, which is kind of in their longer term interest to keep people. Oh, the that's a it's good. A but they also plan. have shuttles, that's a which will be interesting for theory. deployments. Yeah. I mean, the, the early thing for Oculus, too, is like when Facebook bought them, if Facebook is in your on your phone or in your browser, they're just one click away from the, the app or the tab going away. But if they're on your head, it requires um, a significant <laughs> more amount of effort to remove them. And if you're in a car, even more because you, you can't just stop and get out anywhere. So and it's that's an why of they're going to be three thousand dollars. So you won't rip them from your head and throw <laughs> them to the ground <laughs> you'll you'll pause and have to think a little well, bit that's just an apple thing it's like because of course it has to be 8k and it has to be 12 yeah, yeah, cameras yeah. not 10 yeah, cameras yeah, yeah. and it has to be xyz yeah look at the the sales of the oculus quest are quite good because i think it's finally yeah. a price point people can afford beat uh, saber leo those are sales driven by beat it's saber. all beat saber all the time <laughs> i just want to point out and this is another reason i don't like vr you look incredibly dumb when you're playing Beat Saber. To you, you're saving the world. You're having fun. You're dancing. To the to the people in the room with you, they're just all going. <laughs> it's as well, bad as that bunch training, of them. You look good. Oh yeah, that's true. Maybe if you were but a Juilliard, then you're you a real yes, dancer. And you, you look Leo. I, I I say this with love. You don't have to be playing Beat Saber in the waiting <laughs> lounge of an airport. Okay, that's probably you can save true. that for the house. 
I want to take a break. We will talk about the cars next and a lot more. Heather Kelly is here. It's great to have her technology reporter at the Washington Post, Jeffrey Fowler's camera operator. And I take offense to that. He's I, my camera uh, that's right. I, no, I now remember when you were on. It was when the iPhone 12 first came out, and we had all those great pictures that you took uh, with with the uh, iPhone 12. Do you still like it? Uh, I had those review units, so I'm back to my 11, and it's great. Back to the 11. I the envy 11. you so much. I was thinking today, boy, it'd be nice if next time I don't have to buy an iPhone 13, if I could just stick with what I've got. But I just feel, audience, I feel like you know. I have to get the new one every year. And I hate, I hate that feeling. The 11 is fine. It's, not, it's hardly any different. Well, yo, I need you to dig deep. You are a tech show host. You have uh, an audience to think about. You don't get to just buy the phone you want. You need to buy the phone your audience needs. It's a tax deduction, too, I think. So. Yeah, yeah, it is. <laughs> It is. It's taxing it, already. Because unlike you, Heather, they don't send me review units. I don't want review units. I want to buy it uh, anyway because I don't want to have to send it back. Um, did you, Does it hurt? Like, oh, I had this iPhone 12 for, for one brief shining moment. I had the latest, greatest in my hands, and then it was back to last year's model. Did that feel like that? No. Actually, having review units is terrible. Yes. Um, they they <laughs> yes. stack up and they yes. haunt you, just like this yes. list. It's like New Yorker magazines. Exactly. So, stressful. so I'm glad to not get them whenever possible nowadays, especially since we're all working from home, because yeah. um, that would also, I guess, lead to a different divorce. Um, I feel, yeah. And I used to have to mail them back. I didn't have a staff to mail them back. That's even yeah. worse. You got boxes. Oh, well, so, no, the, 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 worst, the worst thing about all that is that when other companies, like, they, they make so many of these that they don't want to pay the, the return postage for it. So they're just like, they don't want them back, which means that I have, like, no kidding, like two huge uh, long drawers worst. full of, like, 10 years worth of yeah. phones that I don't, I don't feel it. I can't give them away. I certainly can't sell them. And maybe I want them for the library, but it means that it's when I do my house, my big house cleaning every three years, another like six or seven, like goes into the drawer. And I'm like, this seems like it should be an art, an art installation, not just something that's in a drawer. Yeah. You see, I have three decapitated just... cat robots in the middle of my <laughs> and I can't get rid of them. I have to mail it to Japan. Piece. And that just is very daunting. This is, me, this so. is Marquez yep. Brownlee's phone drawer. <laughs> this is what you there's, there, I mean, things are it's changing very pretty. Too because yeah. you often see now hashtag gift from Google, which, which like never happened in my early days. And like, it still doesn't happen when you deal with outlets like us, it's, it's review units, but like to YouTubers, Influencers. And Instagrammers. Yeah. yeah. It's Influencers. hashtag gift from Google. And they yeah. just give you that pixel in a giant pizza box yeah. so that you will open that giant yeah. pizza box. Like ours come in a plain brown wrapper. They get like giant pizza boxes or coffins or these weird production things. It's so I'm, different. I'm, I can hear, I can hear people right now. I hear you saying first world problem. Jeez guys, <laughs> they're sending you free stuff. But it you does, can't keep it. You can't keep it. It gets to be a burden. I actually had boilerplate that said, it, in response to what you your problem, Andy, that said, if you send me this phone, you must include a return mailing label. <laughs> you must, because uh, I don't want to. I don't want to keep it. I'm glad I don't have to do it anymore, and I'm glad. Occasionally, uh, we'll we'll do lenders. We got uh, Samsung S21 uh, on loan for review, but most of the time, I just I prefer not to do with it, deal with it. Yeah. Uh, our show today brought to you by, here's something they don't give you <laughs> loaners of, <laughs> a Casper mattress. But you know what? I'm happy to buy one. I just talked to my daughter. She got a new apartment. And, uh, you know, it's a tradition in our family. New apartment, new Casper. Uh, I, so I got her uh, the foundation, uh, they, which is a box spring, the frame and the mattress and the sheets and the pillows. I got It was a complete set of Casper. Under 1000 bucks for the whole setup. I was really happy, and I asked her. I said, D you know, how do you how do you like your your Casper? And I said, can I quote you? She said, I love it. It's the best mattress I've ever had. So I said, can I quote you in the ad? She said, absolutely. It's really true. Casper is there's there's me in my jammies. Look at that though. That's a king size mattress in a surprisingly small box. You open up the box. You you uh, you. You roll it out, and then uh, once you take it out of the, uh, it, I think they must have a giant one of those machines that that you know vacuum seals it because once you take it out, it goes. Whoosh. The other thing I love about Casper mattresses, you don't have to air them out; they're ready to sleep on right away. They're so comfortable, cool sleeping, which is very important. 
supportive mattresses, but they're also super soft. Uh, it's kind of a, a paradox. I guess they do it because they only Casper mattresses are made with 86 supportive gel pods. So that's how they align your spine, eliminate aches and pains. It's supportive, but it's comfortable. And uh, with a Casper, you'll always wake up refreshed, ready to go all year long. Our cat Sammy loves our Casper. There's the Wave Hybrid, perfect for people who have aches and pains and want a mattress with maximum support and cooling. You want the most plush mattress, check out the Nova Hybrid for a plush feel that doesn't sacrifice support. Uh, I gave Abby the original because I think it's a great mattress. That's the one she loves, the best she's ever had. The one for sleepers who want both support and cooling. The best-selling Casper pillow. I sleep with my cat wrapped around my Casper pillow every single night, made with unique pillow-in-pillow -pillow design that's soft on the outside, supportive on the inside for all-night comfort. Casper makes everything you need to refresh your whole bedroom this year, from their super soft percale sheets to their all-season down duvets to their cozy, calming, weighted blanket. I, that's new. I've got to get the weighted blanket. I want to try that out. As always, Casper offers free shipping and free returns with no contact delivery. Make 2021 comfortable. Reset your rest by going to casper.com slash MacBreak. Use the code MacBreak for $100 off select mattresses. MacBreak, that's the offer code, $100 off select mattresses. Terms and conditions apply. See casper.com for details. Casper.com slash MacBreak. It's, it's your official mattress of MacBreak Weekly. It really is of the Laporte family. I think everybody in the family now sleeps on a Casper, including cousins, <laughs> aunts, uncles. We provided Casper. I do to too. All. They're amazing. Yeah, they're great. Yeah. So, um, yes, Andy, I can tell. Oh, he's got no, something. No, no, I just, I just, His phone I just drawer. Flex. There's, this is one of the two. <laughs> can I interest you in an original, an original Nexus, an original Google phone? Wow. So, I got the Facebook phone in there? These, which one? Excuse me? The Facebook phone, a Fire Phone, maybe oh, the Cha Cha. No, I do. I do. I do have the Fire Phone. Uh, maybe not in this drawer, but I do That's have the history. Fire Phone. That's history. The one thing Amazon did that failed, or maybe not the one, but the most yeah. memorable one. They learned lessons. Back, from it, it, was, it was actually right. very forward thinking. Anyway, well, I, I just, and, said, and they had I, those I people to, who you could call and they would help you, forward. right, Heather? Yeah. <laughs> well, it had three D. You press a button. That was a little later. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, uh, and they go. Why what is it? What's the problem? Parallax. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That weird. Uh, that was weird. Just make a shopping phone. No, we'll give it parallax. But why? I just want a shopping phone because we think parallax is cool. But I, I just seriously, I just want yeah. a shopping phone. Your Amazon. We're giving you parallax. Don't worry, Heather. We know who your boss is. You don't have to say anything if you don't want to. No, it's delightful. I'm allowed to say whatever I want yeah. about him. Never that's heard, good. Never heard a beep. Yes. Never. No, I'm sure anybody who's sensible, uh, media owner, is not going to try to get his. You wouldn't have anybody working for you. Um, because no, no, no person with integrity is going to. But he does watch every that. episode of Mac Break. We know that. <laughs> uh, okay, let's talk about cars. It, so it's very confusing, and I think that you all can parse this. Originally, Hyundai made an announcement. Yeah, we're talking to Apple about a car, which I <laughs> sent chills down my spine as soon as I saw it. I thought. Bad move. Stop talking. Just stop talking. Uh, of course, immediately after that, they retracted it. They changed the press release to take the word Apple out. Then, for some reason, last week, we started seeing all these reports that Kia was doing a, a deal with Apple, which made a lot of sense in some respects. Hyundai owns Kia. Hyundai has an electric vehicle platform that's quite mature. Uh, that has 300 plus miles of range. It's got a lot of horsepower if you want it. It's a really nice, the GPM platform is really nice. Uh, they have a, uh, Kia has a manufacturing plant in Georgia. If you're going to build a car, it's probably a great idea to do the deal with somebody who knows how to make automobiles. Just as Apple doesn't make the iPhone, Foxconn mm -hmm. does. And who, and who also has, uh, has service bays pretty much the entire world. Uh, service, service on an Apple car is going to be hell if it's not just a, Apple branded Apple. They replace the entire car if there's something goes yeah, wrong. Every time you every time you get a flat tire, they replace the, the whole car. thing is replaced. So now the latest so, is sorry, sorry, you, sorry you, you drove you drove over a puddle. That's that's water ingress. No Apple <laughs> yeah, care for you. There's a little blue tag inside. Sorry, sorry. Um, now they're taking it back. But here's my question: 
Is this a real take back or is it Apple told us to shut up take back? It cost them a lot in stock there. Or did it cost them the whole contract take back? Oh, or did Apple say, you keep doing this? <sighs> I don't know. I just, I just don't see Google Apple back. now. It, 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 the, these, this announcement, the announcement will precede the product and both of them are so far off at this point. I don't think that Apple would cancel negotiations with what they might feel is the best partner for this project just on the basis that somebody who is going to be duck walked out of that place with a cardboard box holding a couple of industry awards and pins uh fire that guy make sure he never has anything to do with this project ever again but if kia or hyundai has what apple's needs apple needs they're going to do it and it wasn't an announcement the second part that 3.6 billion dollar deal with apple did not come to at least as far as we know directly from kia it came from uh dong a.com or donga.com yeah which is a, a Korean rumor site. Uh, at least that's what I'm deducing from this picture. <laughs> uh, so We all know Apple's putting that money in Bitcoin, not into Hyundai. I mean, come on. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, that's another story. Elon buying one and a half billion dollars <laughs> in Bitcoin and then saying, now I really want to unlock my wallet because he said you could buy uh, Teslas with, uh, your, with Bitcoin. And I have enough Bitcoin to buy a fleet, I think, <laughs> if I could figure out what the password is. Uh, <laughs> oh, no. Uh, so anyway, it in every sense, it's kind of made sense to me that they would pick a manufacturer like Kia that doesn't have a... You know, you pick Ford or GM, uh, they have such a high profile in the U.S. that and Ford globally that everybody would know it's a Ford. If you pick Kia, maybe Apple can white, you know, it can be a white label thing that really has a nice Apple logo on it. Well, they're going to design it, though. They just poached the, the guy who designed designed Porsche, did all the whole Cayenne yeah, yeah. series. So they're yeah. going to almost certainly make their own chassis for it. He did the Taycan, the electric vehicle. He's a chassis guy. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Um, the Johnny Ive of car chassis. What do you think, Heather? Is <laughs> Kia, is Kia just... Uh, backing off to protect their relationship or did they actually have it did they lose it what really happened god only knows how they work um <laughs> but i mean at the end it's going to be like who who has their name on that car it won't be kia like, would kia but would kia be happy with a relationship of like we've made this car and it just says apple on the back it depends how much money it i mean if they get paid a yeah. 20 percent on every car or something May, you know, that's Fox, 30%, right? Aren't those app store guidelines? 30, that's uh, right. It has to be 30. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it doesn't say Foxconn on this, on the phone. Yeah. Uh, you need a car company willing to like give over that much of, of their branding and the reputation to Apple. And I mean, who even thinks about Kias outside of this particular right. like news cycle? Right. Renee, who was it? There was a company that Apple was rumored to be talking with that that's what they do is white label vehicles. Remember that? I don't, I don't recall ago. the name, but yeah. I mean, there's a difference. Like Foxconn really doesn't, like they manufacture Apple stuff, but they basically just take whatever Apple gives them. That was a whole revolution of Apple supply chain management is that they didn't want to go in and like a lot of companies did like these parts bin phones or computers where they're like, okay, take these parts off the shelf, assemble them into a computer, slap our logo on them and go. And that was really cost effective because those were commodity parts. They cost very, very little. And Apple's like, no, we're going to tell you, we're not only going to invent a chamfered edge, we're going to invent the machine that makes the chamfer. <laughs> we're going to, you're going to design it. We're going to lease them from you for exclusive for like a year. And I, Kia, like, are they going to be manufacturing it using that platform or is Apple going to do what Apple does and basically say, OK, this Kia plant is now a de facto Apple manufacturing plant. This is the car you're going to build, uh, you know, and we'll we'll look at your little designs. Just put them down on the shelf over there. But here's the car <laughs> we're going to build. But it could also be a business plan for one of these car manufacturers, like give up your own brand and just start making Foxconn style cars for other companies because it's Apple now. But, you know, they could also make the Google branded car, or the Facebook branded car. All of these sound like a nightmare as I'm saying them out loud. A Twitter car. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, but no, it, car. I think it's think think advertising. Of course, Facebook would want a car, right? Mm. Because remember that in the olden days, uh, a plant would build like the car itself, but then you would have coach builders who would build it into like the Cadillac uh, chauffeur up front, right. living room in the back sort of thing. It, it, this could be part of, of Kia, Kia's business plan saying we're building, in addition to building cars of our own, we're just building a platform that said here is everything that needs to be, everything that this needs to be, needs to be in order to be a car. You just add your own sensors, software and your distinctive styling and you're good to go. 
there are a number like of a there are a number of companies that actually <laughs> make cars for other companies, including, I believe, Kia in the uh, in the earliest days. Yeah. So this isn't Remember the co-branded un, cars. Yeah, this isn't unprecedented. Before to be a version of the Nissan. And there's unlike Foxconn. I mean, you're making a phone. That's one thing to say. Okay, Apple, you tell us what to make. Making a car because of the safety considerations, I feel like requires a significant amount of expertise. It's not something. In other words, that's why Apple's not going to go to Pegatron or Foxconn and say, "Can you make us a car?" Tesla has been making their own cars. I mean, they get a lot of they get a lot of heat for the build quality on a lot of those cars yeah. because they're they're focused more on battery life than they are on build quality, right. and it really varies greatly. But they've ramped up manufacturing to a level I think a lot of their critics didn't think they'd be able to. Yeah, Consumer Reports just uh, said the Model Three has the highest customer satisfaction we've ever recorded, and is among the worst in uh, <laughs> repairability. Which is yeah. bizarre, but I, as a former Tesla owner, I'll I'll testify to that. It, but people you, love you Teslas despite the lack yeah, of build you don't quality buy and interior quality. Yeah, you don't buy a Tesla because it looks so great, or it, you know, you, you buy it because it's cool. It's together so well. Well, yeah. also yeah. Like there's you, literal you duct tape in some of them, and people are happy. Yeah. <laughs> You, you you also a lot of customers they want to identify themselves as Tesla customers. Yes. So that's that's that that's has right. some intersection with Apple. There's going to be a lot of people that who will want to buy an Apple car that's simply right. because they they totally not not simply as a style thing, but because they feel as though this uh, they've invested they've invested wisely in Apple as an extension of their own lifestyle because they imagine that a lot of their beliefs and their style cues you know overlaps with Apple's, and it's. I, again, I still I still am baffled as to why Apple would get into anything with approaching a consumer, direct to consumer sort of car company. But then you look at certain car companies like uh, uh, like Lotus that uh, w makes cars that were that are not that much more expensive than what we imagine an Apple car would cost. If we're thinking that Apple's cars will approach $100,000, uh, Lotus's start at about $100,000, and they only make a couple thousand cars a year, which is a lot more doable than even uh, the Model S's the Tesla Model S's launch, which was uh, tens of thousands. Now they're up to hundreds of thousands. Uh, but if we think of it as more of a Lotus sort of plate, meaning people are going to spend $100,000 and then bump it up with extra RAM for $130,000 and extra, you know, uh, and, and if Apple can get away with just manufacturing a few thousand of them, that could be interesting. I, again, I'm still baff I still have no clue as to why Apple would want to do it, but at least it's not as silly as some reports saying, oh, no, they want to take over the car business the way that they took over the phone business. No, no, they're not going to build millions and millions of cars. I don't think so. No, I think the analysts are ch are champing at the bit for that, just 1% or 2% of revenue from the car yeah. market, though, because it has such yeah huge just, potential. Just just like what Steve Jobs originally said about the go target goals for the iPhone, only not, 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 not being, not being humble bragging, humble whatever. I neglect. What if it's just a ploy to sell more like Apple Music subscriptions? Like you're locked into the car, you can only have <laughs> Apple services. Yeah, it's a walled Spotify car. Barely works. It's a walled it's car. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Everything Apple. You know, it's a walled chariot. I re I hate the idea. I resist the ecosystem play and all that stuff. But I notice I can't help it. I'm being slowly drawn into it with an Apple Watch, an Apple phone, a Macintosh. And and I've always loved Macintoshes, but now with the M1, it's like I just I resistance is futile. I'm just part of the board. But the antitrust stuff is getting them to open up more, Leo. You can choose your own music. I saw <laughs> that. Now. I mean, it's one, one app at a time. Thanks They're to slowly... your review, by the way. Uh, and Micah was on your uh, video reviewing. I bought five of those... Uh, uh, candles. What do you call them? <laughs> HomePod Minis. I bought five oh, of them. They're so cute. <laughs> they don't sound Micah bad. Micah can sell me anything, Leo. I know. Micah's a good salesman. <laughs> they don't sound yeah, bad. They don't so. sound as good as the HomePod, but they sound fine, yeah. and I have them all over the house. Uh, intercom is turned on now, which really annoys everybody when I use it. <laughs> I'm coming home! <laughs> Coming home, I'm coming home. Leo says I'm coming home, I'm coming home. Yeah, it's there. Uh, uh, I'm, when is the follow thing going to happen? Because now it does sort of follow with the new uh, version of iOS. It yeah. says, I see the new, I see you're in another room, but I want it to f literally follow me. Like, just start music on one and move around. I'm yeah. creepy music stalker, dude. Yeah, yeah is it not going to do that? Is that? Did I misunderstand what Apple was promising at WWDC? I don't know if it'll do it automatically. Right now, you can just tell it you to, tap it. to switch to whatever room yeah. you're in. Yeah, uh, or you can just tell it. You can say "move music to the kitchen" and it'll do it. Right. But it doesn't do it I proactively it to, I yet. To I don't, follow me. 
if you detect my watch, they should that should be a shortcut. Like that should just be a serious shortcut. If you detect my watch within yeah. two meters, switch the music yeah, to here. It could do it. Isn't that what headphones are for? Headphones. <laughs> I guess I could wear headphones. With you that's it, that's actually. But what then I your do. family is not enjoying your choice of music. That's with right. You. I don't get to. I don't get to <laughs> harass them. <laughs> God dang it! You kids are going to learn about Sam Cooke right there oh, now. I don't care which one you want to do. Big and ready in I the totally harbor. Do that tomorrow. For all Heather, we have an 18-year-old who's stuck with us because of COVID, living at home, going oh, to school kid. at home. He is miserable. Roger Whitaker, 24/7. And I do. I do. I. Do, I don't. Tr I'm not trying to do that. I'm just saying, you really should know Roger Whitaker's music. <laughs> is he doing the opposite? Is he like... No, he's of... being surprisingly nice about the whole thing. I mean, uh, he's up to something. Dad, it's called the yeah. lap. Leave me alone. There you go. He's up to something. <laughs> That's exactly right. It's too quiet. Yale University was a time of tumultuous change in 1971. <laughs> to nobody fewer than a young man by the name of Leo Laporte. <laughs> Dan Riccio... We talked about him, and now uh, Mark Gurman insists. We, you, you said, Renee, I think, uh, that Dan, when, when he left uh, running all of hardware to go to a new project, was probably not going to cars, but AR, VR. Yep. That's what Gruber said as well, and he, uh, Gurman says that's correct. That's correct. Um, Apple moves to He already to, ran it. It made a lot of sense. Yeah, he ran it along with everything else, but if AR yeah. is going to be the next big thing, then it makes sense to put somebody like Riccio in uh, in charge. Um, and then Apple has also told Steph that it's moving the group working on in-house displays and camera technology to Johnny Saruji. So in-house displays, Saruji's already in charge of processors and modems. So yep. he's now got displays and camera technology. That seems to all be together in one head-worn device. Yes? It's it's just hard. It's, it's platform technology. Well, he's hardware technology, which includes platform. But it's the stuff that is core to every product that Apple is going to put out, not specific yeah, to there you go. anyone. It's the, things that, it's the things that make the things, so to yeah. speak. Yeah, okay. I should have, I sorry, I meant to mention that in our first segment. I left that one out. Wonderful, I thought. It's a little bit, it's hey geography, but I liked it anyway. A uh, story about, in Bloomberg Business Week by Mark Gurman and Austin Carr about, uh, really, an, an ode to Tim Cook. And, uh, you know, it's been, what, 11, almost 12 years since uh, Steve passed and Tim Cook took over. And I think you can, th this is absolutely accurate. You can really say that Cook put his stamp on the company and its success is very much for a long time we said oh it's just Steve Jobs it's you know it's the momentum Steve created I don't I don't think you you can say that anymore um August 2018 the company's market value reached a trillion dollars uh in two, two years two years later two trillion dollars um it uh, the article's interesting because it talks about Tim's political acumen as well that's one thing Steve Jobs never had. Uh, no. They recall a, a dinner uh, that uh, Jobs was at with uh, President Obama, and Obama asked him, "When are you gonna When are you gonna move uh, iPhone production to the United States?" And Jobs bluntly said, "Those jobs aren't coming back." <laughs> Cook, when asked the same thing uh, at a, a, a dinner uh, with, uh, um, I think it was with Trump. Who was it with? Well, yeah. anyway, at another dinner, uh, was so diplomatic, nobody remembers his answer. Yeah. Oh, no, it was like Biden. It was with Biden. The hearings, Leo. Huh? It's those beige suits that he wore. Remember yeah. like, at the Senate hearings, he wore the beige suit. Nobody could even see him in the background. Yeah. yeah. Master of that. I love, I love the conclusion that no one can remember the answer, which means it was very diplomatic. <laughs> they explain why at the end, though. It's just they don't have the same realities in, in North America anymore. We didn't invest in it's, the same Times have anymore. changed. Absolutely. Yeah. Times have changed. Um, it's, it's still it's still not a great. I, I don't think that that Tim Cook should be lambasted for uh, have trying to create such a close uh, relationship with the Trump administration. However, 
it's unfortunate that Trump, who needed certain optics, was able to exploit his relationship with Tim Cook to create those optics that he needed for his ongoing PR campaign. And I wish that Apple had been a little collectively had been a little bit more to, more resistant against that from be he was one of only he was one of many CEO tech CEOs at the table during the first couple months of uh, of Trump's administration about, hey, look, I'm having a conference with all the tech heads. So look, uh, look how informed I am. But the idea of allowing uh, allowing Trump to use the, the Texas plant as a, as a, not only as a photo op, but also to bl almost blatantly lie in front of Tim. Yeah. And you, and the, you don't have to have Tim like leap in front of the microphone and contradict the president in front of everybody on a live camera. You can have Apple release a press release a day or a diplomatic period later saying, by the way, what the president said was a, a slip of the tongue. Let's say here's the facts yeah, about the, I mean, what we're using, using this plant for. I, I, you know, politically, I agree with you, but from a pure capitalistic point of view, I think you can say that it's succeeded, right? Tim's, Tim maybe wasn't, you know, uh, as, you know, he grinned and bared it. And sometimes his grin really looked like he was just barely bearing it. But he danced for Nero and Nero bestowed him with pleasure. That's not exactly a great thing for the, for the, for the resume. I guess. I guess. I mean, Tim's Tim's responsibility is not to uh, politics, but to the stakeholders for Apple, and he's certainly done a good job for them. I I agree with you, Andy. Morally and ethically, questionable, but it's I'm not his I'm, job. I'm, I'm, I'm not well. I'm not necessarily suggesting that. Uh, uh, again, there are many CEOs at that first at that first table, uh, so it's not as though he was unique. Oh, in that. he wasn't alone. However, Exactly. However, uh, Apple, he did have a, a lot of very good business reasons to make sure that especially in the in a coming not necessarily very well thought out or justified trade war with the country that manufactures all of the company's stuff. It was a very, very good plan for him to have this company's ear and also to be able to say, perhaps you could delay this or this this uh, this uh, decision that you've handed down for several months until we can at least get the iPhone out. That also worked out well. i'm I'm saying that when you look at looking in the past, who do you want to shack up with? You know, yeah, who do you want your yeah, name associated with? Yeah. Did you have to be quite that? At what, his, at what point? Do history you say, may it, not it, be it, kind it, to him, but the stock I'm, market I'm just, is. I'm just saying that it means that when you go on to say that, oh, we believe in freedom, we believe in we, we as, uh, as our, we, we believe that everyone should be trade for that. Racism is a bad, it's a horrible thing. We believe in opportunity for all, but then you're not, you're willing to. You're, and you're and you're already a trillion dollar company. You're not like a struggling company that's really trying to stay afloat in a highly competitive market. No, you own the markets that you are in. You yeah. have enough leeway to not have a. You're not don't have a don't have a, a a hostile relationship with the president, but not to simply say yes by all means. Stand next to me. I'm gonna have to <laughs> no. correct myself. I called it hey geography a, uh, a overly uh, 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 pleasant <laughs> biography, but no, in fact. Here's a paragraph. Cook came to Apple in 1998 after a dozen years at IBM and a six-month stint at Compaq and seemed, at least to old Apple hands, devoid of any obvious personality. He'd, <laughs> he'd work 18-hour days and send emails all through the night. When he wasn't at the office, he seemed to live at the gym. Unlike Jobs, he had no pretensions to being an artist. One former Apple executive who worked with Cook said, Tim was always pure work, grind, 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 grind. <laughs> I always found him exceptionally boring. <laughs> I feel so attacked. Oh, poor Is that me. not normal? Yeah. <laughs> um, anyway, if you're interested in, uh, this is not the first kind of long profile piece of, uh, of Tim Cook I've seen, but if you're interested, here's that, here's that picture of Tim and uh, what's his name um, at the factory. And then we were talking a couple of weeks ago, apparently Tim gave... President Trump the first Mac Pro. I'm so jealous. <laughs> Which I'm sure he immediately, as you said, ah, it's, it's re re revisionary hardware. You never want. You never want the hardware. first. Yeah. And apparently, turned it over. We're, we're guessing immediately to Jared, and said, "I don't know what to do with this." Here. He's using it as a Minecraft server. Can you tweet with today? this? No. All right. I don't want it. Probably pay, tried to pay an electric bill with it or a hotel bill. <laughs> I really doubt he tried to pay any bills with it. <laughs> In Good fact, he did. Okay, we I know for a fact he did not. <laughs> um, so, you know, it's funny because there was the same kind of uh, victory lap for uh, Satya Nadella after his six years 
uh, running Microsoft and really turning that company into a powerhouse. And yeah. uh, this is a similar. Apple is the $2.3 trillion fortress that Tim Cook built. Bloomberg Business Week. He definitely has far. very strong ideologies. Like he believes in in many different things, some of them in conflict, I'm guessing because just human. But he, he really seems to believe that you have to be engaged in order to affect change. And that includes being engaged with people who represent ideologies that he is dramatically, personally opposed to. And in some cases, that works to Apple's benefit. In some cases, it works to his personal equity detriment, like especially with, you know, certain administrations or certain countries. Uh, but he just does the same thing every time he stays engaged. And I don't know if in the grand sum of history, it, he'll be thought of worse for it. But he really seems to believe that that's the only way he'll have an impact on them, at least eventually. Look, there are a lot of yeah. different ways to be a CEO. Uh, there are a lot of different ways to, you know. There, uh, Steve Jobs, lot famously. Of, very different. Yeah, a lot of paths to success. I, I kind of compare it to chess world champions. Uh, there are the guys who are slashers, attacker. You know, the Bob, Steve, Steve Jobs is more like a Bobby Fischer type. And then there are the very boring technicians who get the job done. Uh, but both are paths to success. And maybe uh, the key is getting the style. right the right personality in the seat at the right time. You or you look at uh, Jeff Bezos, uh, who is clearly a master strategician, uh, also brilliant at execution. Um, I don't know. Would you call Tim Cook a great uh, strategician? Um, he's very different, though. He's not a like he 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 thinks in terms of logistics. Like I, I've yeah, he's I've a legit. Yeah, he's more about years, logistics. He's like yeah, if I if if I would come to him with a spreadsheet and he'd remember that this cell was different eight months ago in the spreadsheet that I gave him, and he could keep. <laughs> All of that, like the right. same way Steve Jobs could look at the future and see personal networking and this and that. Tim Cook can see these numbers almost like floated, like the matrix floating in front of him. And he is very good at knowing. He, he doesn't know where the puck is going to be in terms of products, but he knows where those numbers are going to be. And he can let other people worry about the puck. I wish there were a, a statistic like there is in uh, football or baseball for unforced errors. Um, it seems to me there have been no unforced errors on Tim Cook's watch. Uh, John Browlett comes to mind. Who's early that? on? He hired him to be head of retail. He was oh, the, the retail yeah. that was the you UK know what company. that was a flop. Yeah. You're right, but he fixed it. And I forget if Papermaster was Jobs or or Cook. I don't remember who. But there's there's been a few. Yeah, he does fix them fast. Yeah, he doesn't wait. Yeah, so he replaced Ron Johnson with a guy who was clearly not fit for the job, but then replaced him with is that when Angela Arons came in or yeah yeah. So I mean, he may that was a very good move. Uh, very successful strategy. And they let the move. Mac line uh, go in completely the wrong direction for a good six years. There. Yeah, I like blame Johnny Ive for that. I feel like that was Johnny Ive um, uh, misprioritizing thinness and, uh, you know, design over technology. And Tim let him, but a good yeah. manager, obviously, that's part of what being a good manager means. And he also inherited Johnny Ive from Steve Jobs. Once Johnny left, I think but they... But Johnny was off doing Apple Park and Apple stores for a long time, so I think it probably went deeper than just Johnny Ive. You don't blame the uh, butterfly keyboard on Johnny Ive. <laughs> I do. I mean, not singularly. I mean, it's never a person. It's, no. a, it's a department. Like, he certainly let, created the philosophy for yeah. that. But if you're not there paying attention, that philosophy can be interpreted in the wrong way. Right. Yeah. Well, the, the, the gold Apple Watch comes up. I, that as, yeah. it'll, I, I think it will still be the most embarrassing product Apple okay. ever made. Unforced error. I agree. And you can see Tim's face, right? Like, remember during the presentation, he spent all of like three seconds on it. Yeah. He knew it was a bad idea. Bad look. Um, but it, do, 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 do. And I'm clearly not getting into Dogecoin fast enough with Apple's massive, massive <laughs> reason. <laughs> Doge coin. Doge, if right. you're going to talk about right. the Doge. Dodgeball Doge coin. Dodgeball Doge coin, which is now, what is it? 2000, what is it? Seven cents. Seven cents. <laughs> and how much did Father Robert have? He had 20 oh, million of them. 20 million Doge coins. Which the is, second Vatican. It's all about knowing when, you got to know when to hold them. <laughs> know <laughs> no when to fold, to fold them. <laughs> and uh, he folded too soon. I saw it was from Clubhouse, so it's probably wrong. We did see that Tesla bought a one and a half billion dollars worth of uh, Bitcoin. Then somebody said That's Apple. Been widely reported that Apple bought some. No, the Tesla bought some. Well, we know the Tesla did. Yeah. They had to report it themselves in their yeah financials. But uh, 
Apple didn't buy any Bitcoin, did they? I would really disappoint me. <laughs> that, would, that would really make me sad. I don't know why. Uh, it's it's hard to know. There's a, there's a part of there's the part of the tech business that I'm aware of, but don't get involved in because it's way way out of my experience, my able to understand. But I'm surprised by how much of their business is tied up in actually using their money to create investments and make money off of very conventional investments. So it's not always about making phones. It's not always about creating oh. the right services. It is it is also about having an investment fund that is very well managed. No, they're very obviously very good with finances. Uh, of course, there was the Dutch sandwich and the, <laughs> the whatever the it was, whip to the, the Irish sandwich. whip to the Dutch. But then uh, they also have been taking their cash and borrowing against it instead of spending the cash to buy back their stock. They just borrowed on Monday. They borrowed yesterday. They borrowed eight and a half billion dollars uh, with a four part bond deal. Yeah. So um, investment grade uh, bonds. And and it's you know I don't understand business well enough to know, but it's 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 cheap for them to do that, and uh, for some reason it's better to do that. Actually, that was in May. Let me see what they just bought. I don't remember how much they they uh, issued this year. They're like wah bonds, but for apples. Yeah. So that May it was May it was eight point five billion. In August it was five point five billion. Uh, in I mean it just it goes on and on. Let me see what the most recent they just most recently borrowed more. Um, I, it, you know, uh, let's see in the past month, 14 billion, 14 billion. And all of that to Cars fund themselves, Leo. stock buybacks and dividends. It's cheaper to borrow the money than it is to spend it. Apparently. Maybe it's offshore money they're borrowing against. No, no, no. Oh, okay. Yes. It was when it was, when it was offshore, that was for sure why they borrowed. So maybe that, yeah. Maybe that's still the still the case. Did we ever find out how much money they brought back into the United States when they were offered that deal? Oh, uh, a, few, a few years ago, they were, they were offered, the, yeah, uh, Trump, offered Trump, a deal to repatriate. Trump said you could repatriate for a much smaller tax bill. Let me just check. Apple repatriation. Apple plans to repatriate $285 billion. <laughs> <laughs> mm. And that cost them $38 billion in tax, which was a significant, that's 15.5% as opposed to... I mean, to, the quarrel with the U.S. is that the U.S. is one of the few companies who wants to tax you on money that you made in other places and pay taxes on in those places. I mean, regardless of your Irish whips and things, a lot of countries, whatever money you make in other countries, right, they but, just let those countries... But the other taxes. argument is that Apple moved that stuff offshore to avoid those taxes. So, you know, in fact, that's why they took the deal. Good, we got the money back. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that was two years ago. So I don't know why they're still borrowing bonds because that was the initial. Maybe they still have more. I don't know. Maybe they have more money overseas, or the interest rates are so low, or something. That's the real it's reason. Math, Leo. It's cheaper for them to borrow the money and then make money. I wish I were rich enough to do this: borrow money to invest in the stock market, and then you make more money back, and then you pay off the bonds, and you're rich. <laughs> How well, come I'll I can't do that? Bucks. She can lend you 10 bucks. You can lend Andy 10 bucks, and we'll see how we do. <laughs> Good news, everyone. Tim Cook's headed to Foxwoods. Everyone's going to get a bonus this well, year. I if somebody would just make a TikTok explaining this, I'd appreciate it. Thank you very much. <laughs> All right, let's take a break. We're going to we have got more news. We've got a great panel. Renee Ritchie, Andy Anako, uh, a wonderful visit from Heather Kelly of uh, the Washington Post, who uh, is not wearing VR glasses at the moment. Or a baseball cap. It kind of weirds me out. But wishes she was. Yeah. What? <laughs> Why the baseball cap? Why? I have shoulder oh, because, hair. Oh, because, because, because I've been working all day. Andy and, my hair's and kind of Renee all are both wearing them. It's not a style thing. It's, I don't, don't want to don't get my hair working. <laughs> I'm getting a haircut uh, Friday. I'll tell you what. I'll, I'll, participate. I'll at least wear actual glasses so that you guys don't feel so lonely. <laughs> If you we put on glasses, glasses, I have to put on glasses. I'm the only one not wearing a baseball cap and glasses. All right, you put yours on. I'll put mine on. Okay, she's getting her glasses out, folks. Oh, that's good. Go. That's a good look. Oh, my God, you guys are hideous. <laughs> I know. <laughs> oh, you hey, you, you tell, are. You couldn't tell by the way we speak? I had this, I've gotten more value out of this one prop. I feel like Gallagher. I'm gonna, Did you ever turn it on? Uh, I... 
I haven't charged these in years. These are the Snapchat <laughs> spectacles. I can't, I put them away now. I've worn them What's like Snapchat, four Leo? times in the last like two weeks. <laughs> yeah, you heard it. You, yeah, remember like before there was TikTok, there was Snapchat. Remember them? They're doing pretty the well, shockingly. Are they doing well, are they doing well Snap? I mean, they're they're there. They're making money. They're getting new users. I, I'm as baffled as you are. My, uh, I'm <laughs> trying to think. My uh, my older kids, 26 and 28. My 26 year old still snaps. He's the Snapchat generation. Um, I think it's generational. Should we stop using like Gen X, Gen Z and just go by our main yeah. social media? Yeah, social media. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I think I'm going to say, uh, Heather, you were in the AIM generation, the AOL Instant Messenger generation. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Grew up like all the time on AIM. I was talking about- I, got, I didn't get it till I was a senior. I'm not that Oh, old. okay. Yeah, my <laughs> daughter uh, was AIMing- uh, all through high school. <laughs> and, and I think middle Andy school. Andy and I too. are Morse code and we're proud. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, uh, hey, Grandpa, I, I'm UUCP. Thank you very much. <laughs> Unix, Unix system process, copy protocol. Thank you very much. Our show today brought to you by Express VPN. You, you know what's not, you know what's not right? Netflix. That's what's not right. They look at your location and they say, oh, you're in the U.S. You can only watch Netflix U.S. And then they increase the prices. They're going to raise the prices again at the end of this month. Of course, you could cancel your subscription. You could say, I've watched it all. I don't want to watch any more. Or you could use ExpressVPN. This is really, this is really awesome. And uh, get your full money's worth. And, then, and this is not illegal, I might add. You, you fire up Netflix. It says you're in the UK or you're in the US, rather. And then you, you, you fire up ExpressVPN. There's a button on there. Now, this is the trick I'm going to tell you. If you press the button, it's going to pick the, the ExpressVPN server nearest you for best speed. But you can. There's a little drop down below it. And you could say, I want to be in London. You, you do that. Boom, refresh Netflix. All of a sudden it says, oh, you're in the UK, eh? Well, we got all these other shows you can watch. Or Japan. Or France. There's all sorts of, you know, you want to practice your Spanish? Go to Spain or Mexico. Uh, that's what's pretty amazing about ExpressVPN. It's so fast. They invest in their servers, their infrastructure, and this is important. This is why you want a good VPN as opposed to a cheap VPN. They invest in their infrastructure, so they have high-speed servers in over 90 countries. You can ho search around uh, and watch Orphan Black in the U.K. Or, or Friends. Yes, it's still on in the U.K. Change your location. And it's fast enough you can watch HD video. That's the, the amazing thing. In fact, I know a lot of people put ExpressVPN on their uh, router. It works with a number of routers. And then the whole family's protected. The whole family's private. It hides your search. You know, if you're searching on Google, they don't see your IP address. They see ExpressVPN's IP address. They don't know who it is. It hides from your internet service provider who might be logging what you're doing. So they can sell that to marketers, hides that as well. Keeps you secure too. Nobody can, nobody can attack you because you, all of your internet traffic is encrypted all the way to the ExpressVPN servers. Now, I've always said this. It's really important to choose the right VPN because if that VPN is, is engaging in improper practices like, like logging what you're doing, that's just as bad as your ISP. But I can assure you ExpressVPN is not. Regularly audited by PricewaterhouseCoopers. Their privacy policy is what it says it is. And they use this. This is how committed they are. They actually wrote something they call Trusted Server. It's a RAM-based VPN server. So when you log into that ExpressVPN server in the Docklands in the UK, it spins it up, runs in memory, sandbox, so it can't write to the hard drive, cannot log you. And then when you're done, it's gone, and there is no trace of your visit. Literally zero trace of your visit. You can even use ExpressVPN. Don't tell them I told you this to watch BBC iPlayer. Don't tell them I told you that, though. ExpressVPN, no buffering, high speed, super secure, most importantly, super private, no logging. Be smart. Stop paying for services you don't get the full benefit of. Get your money's worth at expressvpn.com slash MacBreak, E-X-P-R-E-S-S, -S VPN. I think you know how to spell it. If you use our special link, expressvpn.com slash MacBreak, you can get 15 months for the price of 12, three extra months free. Brings it down to below seven bucks a month. That's a great price. Sure, they're v free VPNs, but, you know, if you're not paying for it, guess who? Guess who's the, the product? You. ExpressVPN, a fair price for the best service out there. ExpressVPN.com slash 
Mac Break. We thank you so much for supporting Mac Break Weekly Express VPN. We thank you, Mac Break Weekly listener, for supporting us uh, by using that special address so they know. Study from Mount Sinai. I don't know how we can turn this into something useful, but the Apple Watch can predict your COVID-19 diagnosis up to a week before testing. This is published in the peer-reviewed Journal of Medical Internet Research, or as we call it, Jammer. <laughs> Found that... <laughs> that's not what we call it. Found that wearable hardware, uh, specifically the Apple Watch, can predict a positive diagnosis up to a week before the test. It was called the Warrior Watch Study, used a dedicated Apple Watch and iPhone app, included participants from the Mount Sinai staff. They used the app for health data monitoring and collection. They also filled out a daily survey to provide uh, feedback on their symptoms and other factors, including stress. And uh, they were able to, combining that information, I guess it, it did help to have the, uh, the survey, but the biometric signal, including heart rate variability, that was the key, um, was a key indicator of strain on a person's nervous system. When combined with symptoms like a cough, they were able to predict infections up to a week before tests. Heart rate variability. Actually, this Aura ring I wear also does that. It used to be a sponsor. I still wear the ring. Um, I can see heart rate variability. Where do you see it on the watch, Renee? I don't. I don't remember where you see that. Is it in the? Health, I don't know what they're using. The I don't know if they're using the pulse oximeter or they're using. They said uh, HRV a heart rate monitor. Um, but do you get that? I don't think you normally get that information. I mean, you so can maybe, go into the health app and you can, can go you? into the, in the health app. Yeah. Uh, you know, athletes use that to uh, tell them uh, their readiness. Yeah, I see a lot of health data. Holy cow. Yeah. Heart, heart rate variability is it doesn't require a new sensor. It it literally is what it says. Oh, yeah. the, Here's how, mine. Is, exactly yeah. how right, how how irregular is the space between your heartbeats? Oddly, a study. irregular is better than regular, right? You want more variability, I think. Mine's uh, there is, here it is. Where is it? There's, oops, yeah, yeah mine's seventeen. Uh, how do you use this thing? If, how does if, it if work? A, oh, there it is. <laughs> <laughs> there's a there's a I was looking at a Harvard uh, Harvard Health uh, uh, note from uh, from the Harvard blog saying that it's uh, it's a sign of your flight or flight re your body's ah. fight or flight reflex that there's more variability when you're calm than when you are like in a you're focused there's a hy hy more hypothalamic uh, right. activity on that cheetah that's still, about to chase you down yeah there, there's and it's still there, it's still apparently. It's a factor that's getting a lot of traction. Like in 2017, they were first thinking about, well, that's this is a thing, but what is it going to predict for us? So, it's it wasn't something. Uh, certainly wasn't something I was I was aware of. So until, it's a measurement uh, of stress. Looking at this. Uh, the stress on the not per, not the kind of stress where you're feeling anxious and nervous, but basically how well is your body chemically responding to what's going on inside it? Sometimes it's not something that you perceive. It is something that there is something that's causing the entire system to go erratic. Do you wear a, an Apple Watch, Heather? I do not. I I had a loner that I never <laughs> See, used. There's the problem. I, <laughs> well, I'm just cheap, but I wanted to try Fitness Plus. Um, oh yeah. So I yeah. I installed it, but I didn't have a big enough screen for it. And so I gave it to my husband so we could use his iPad instead of buying. Anyways, it's all a racket. Sorry. It's all a racket. Yeah. That's the review. It's all a racket. I don't racket. want to know if I'm about to die. I kind of want it to be a surprise. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Ideally a surprise <laughs> that you just wake up to one day and you're dead. <laughs> Can I, wake can up I and say that when I, when I got sent the, when I got sent like the first Apple Watch with EKG to review, I'm like, okay, charged it, did all the setup, and then before I put it on, I just had this mo I had this moment of like calm, saying, okay, now Andy, realize that when you put this watch on, it might give you information in the next hour that's going to change your life materially Yikes. because you have never had EK. Not not that I, not that I've been worried about it, but it's like, oh come on, please don't tell me that I have this heart situation that's going to kill me at any second because right now I don't feel as though I have that and I'm doing I feel okay. This is I the ordered a pizza. I <laughs> yeah. have uh, I believe I have the X-ray from uh, your sleep last night. There it is. That's an AirPod. <laughs> <laughs> this is a guy 
<laughs> it's, Only it, one? It's interesting because it's very close to where Andy lives in Worcester. He, a Worcester, Worcester man swallows AirPod while sleeping and does not realize it. That headline is just so beautifully straightforward, especially the does not realize it part. That's not real. I, 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 I've, never, I've never slept that deeply. I'm very envious. <laughs> Apart from the, ingesting something that's both expensive and health and, and, and like, again, a battery that you probably should not be swallowing. This is from uh, 20, also found there, the house cat. This is from 22 WWLP. You probably watched that, Andrew. Uh, in Worcester, a Worcester man lucky to be breathing today after accidentally swallowing one of his AirPods. Bradford Gautier, good, good French Canadian, woke up Tuesday morning, noticed he had a little trouble swallowing. He attributed it to a dry or sore throat and carried on with his day. The day before, he had been shoveling snow for two hours after the nor'easter. You remember that, Andy? That was a nightmare. He, he oh, didn't want to know why Metallica wicked. was coming out of his mouth. He says he went to sleep curious. that night all worn out. <laughs> I went back in the morning and shoveled snow for an hour. When I came in, I tried to drink a glass of water again and couldn't, says Gautier. At this point, Gautier also noticed one of his AirPods was missing. <laughs> <laughs> his family began putting clues together. By that point, my wife and son had gotten the idea I may have swallowed it. They brought it up jokingly at first, but it seemed too coincidental <laughs> that I would be missing it when I knew I went to bed with it while I felt a distinct blockage in the center of my chest. <laughs> he went to the emergency room, and much to the doctor's surprise, an X-ray showed his missing AirPod lodged in his esophagus. He didn't chew it enough. <laughs> exactly. You know, in one shot, this is a very common problem. People do not chew their food sufficiently. As a result, they gulp, they gulp, and things get lodged in your esophagus. They did an emergency endoscopy to remove it. Uh, unknown whether the uh, AirPod continued to work after the endoscopy. Is that covered under Apple Care? <laughs> I don't know. Here it is. Here is the errant AirPod. <laughs> Oh, let's see. We're, we're getting worried about nothing. It wasn't. A, it wasn't an AirPod Pro. It was one of the first generation. Oh, ones. no big deal. I've lost. Max. I probably <laughs> swallowed many of those. I don't know where they ended up. They're not anywhere. Ba I the, can... ba the battery was probably going to die in a, in a week anyway. Yeah. So. Yeah. Uh, he said, "It never occurred to me that sleeping with headphones could be a safety hazard. I was really quite lucky." So a happy Maybe ending for this man suffering. Aaron I'm was concerned now. <laughs> that uh, probably is going to appear in the next season of Ted Lasso. I'm thinking. <laughs> uh, by the way, Ted Lasso, four Golden Globe nominations uh, for Jason Sudeikis um, as actor, uh, best television series, musical or comedy. Uh, so, and, and, and uh, that On the Rocks movie, that was an Apple movie too, wasn't it? With Bill Murray, he got uh, nominated. Wolf Walkers, which is an animated feature. Multiple, multiple Golden Globe nominations eh. for Apple 90, TV+. Plus. 91 people, you can easily buy them. It's, it's <laughs> nice, but okay. The Hawal that, Wait a minute, you're telling me the Hollywood Foreign Press Association is only 91 people? <laughs> I, actually, I think it's in the high 80s. It's... <laughs> They're it, dying it, it, off. It's very, very, it is very, very fast. It's, it's such a, it's such a small, it's such a small amount of, amount that a, a, a film studio could easily like buy each of them a gold watch engraved with "Thanks for being keep a it fair, Apple Judge, watch? keep it fair." Keep it and fair. And it's, it's yeah. kind of, it's kind of known to be if you there if if you if it's advantageous for you to make sure that your network gets lots and lots of nominations. There's a open the checkbook, you'll get it. Well, and of course, they make sure that there are at least a hundred categories for awards, yeah. which makes it more easy to uh, to find one you would like to win. Best actor in a TV series, musical, or comedy series, Jason Sudeikis, who was really good in Ted Lasso. Best yes. performance by an actor in a supporting role in any motion picture, Bill Murray and On the Rocks. Ted Lasso also nominated for best TV series, musical, or comedy. Wolf Walkers for best motion picture animated. I haven't watched that one yet, but. Uh, so there you go. Actually, it's my favorite award show to watch because everybody's drunk. Not this year. I know. Oh, I'm pretty sure they'll still be drunk. But they yeah. will be drunk at that's home. That's true. On Zoom, maybe. Yes. Oh, I'd that's watch a that. bummer. Zoom, yeah. They got. Uh, they brought back uh, Amy Poehler and um, Tina Fey. Tina Fey to uh, to host. Is it not Amy Poehler? Uh, is it Amy Poehler? I don't know. I yeah, I think so. I should read more People magazine. I don't keep up on this stuff. 
I have to ask my wife when I want to know this stuff. Yeah, Amy Poehler and Tina Fey, who are very funny. Yeah. Um, well, the, the, fa the fact that I had to remind myself that The Five Bloods by Spike Lee didn't oh, get nominated oh, for anything. Snubbed. That's pretty, that's pretty much all you got to say. Yeah. And it's Emily in Paris did get nominated. And if you'd like to have another hour long show where I discuss why that's bad, I'm available. Yeah. Why? Yeah. Emily in Paris, tell me about that. I don't know that show. Is it a good show? It was like the worst show. <laughs> No, the worst the show. Season eight, the, the worst, worst show yeah. was on HBO Max. It was the flight attendant with Kelly. Oh, I loved that. Did you really? I was very entertained, which is all I really need right now because everything coming out is dark and depressing, and people die, and I just. But you didn't like Lily Collins in Paris. She had a whole season to learn how to speak French, and she just never did. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I won't want to watch that then. What about Cobra Kai and Wandavision, Leo? Uh, what about him? No, oh, also, they, they also snubbed. I know. Well, one division's this year, right? Does it? Cut That's off right. Like, yeah, I'm sure. Oh, I'm yeah. sure it's not eligible. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Shouldn't Ricky Gervais hold everything, host everything now because he insults the executives? In the two, audience? two years in a row, the they kept bringing him back, but I think they finally. You know what? Tina and Amy were hysterical. They really were good. But you're right. I forgot they're not going to all be sitting there in the Beverly Hills Hotel and. Drinking heavily and stuff. That's going to be no fun. Did you see the, the Duff Five Bloods, Andy? Is it great? Yeah, it's it's really good. I kind of fell I kind of fell out of Spike Lee for for a long time, except for his documentaries. But yeah, it is intense. It is it is it looks like a huge budget movie in terms of every single every single environment that they've needed to have to absolutely sell a. A complicated story that takes place in multiple times uh, times uh, they is actually sold but once it, but more than anything else it was one of those like your <laughs> made the mistake of, of starting it at around 11 p.m. because it's like, two and a half hours there, I was like, yeah it's no, long because I, I'm like sitting there like on the sofa oh, with like my head in my nice. hands like I'm gonna have to stay up for two or three hours after this just to make sure and watch cartoons because this is just such oh, okay. a really great intense sort of thing Netflix so yeah that's so that that was pretty. It was pretty dramatic for it not to get any nominations. No performance. No direction. No producing. Nothing. Yeah. So I think widely considered a snub is I think the phrase. Um, oh, I'll have to watch it, and I'm going to watch Emily in Paris just so I can mock it with you next time, Heather. <laughs> I look forward to that in French. Please mock it in French. Mock. Do you speak French, Heather? Okay. No, and now I feel silly for mocking somebody else <laughs> speaking French. But you never, to but in your not defense, in never lived in Paris. So no. And if somebody wants to pay me to move to Paris, I promise. I will learn French. French. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, Apple got eleven nominations. As we're talking awards season for the fifty-second annual NAACP Image Awards. Uh, outstanding variety show for uh, Apple Music as well. Verzuz, I haven't heard that. The Banker got four nominations. The Oprah Conversations. Little Voice. Your show, your favorite show, uh, Renee Central Park, also got nominated. I don't know. Am I putting words in your mouth? No, Ted Lasso is my favorite. Uh, I love Ted Lasso. I'm, and this year I'm looking forward to Foundation. I hope. I just hope they don't disappoint me. <sighs> That's so going to be hopes tough. Yeah I, yeah, I think you might. I don't know. That's going to be tough. I know. I know. I know. It's going to be tough. Uh, so nervous. Did you reread it, Isaac Asimov's classic science fiction? I I am considering it, but I don't know if I want it that fresh in my mind. I, I watched the TV I, show. Was it you, John? Somebody reread it and said it's a little disappointing. It's the kind of thing we all read in high school. Yes. And maybe doesn't age as well. So maybe yeah, just wait for the show. A lot of that show. stuff doesn't age very yeah, well at all. Yeah, a lot of a lot of science fiction does not age well. Dune hold held up for me. I read Dune again recently. Dune is a good, well, at least the first volume is very very good. Yes, that's, that's that all movie. Of Dune for me pandemic released ever or is it still yeah it's coming like out it's going to be one of those time warner straight to video releases later this year yeah denis villeneuve so angry so salty i i he's a great director i like yeah. his stuff i like his stylistic innovation but that's a another tough one to put on film i think uh long twitter thread um from a developer costa eletheriu who apparently, he's had a number of uh, uh, successful apps. He says the App Store has a big problem, and it happened to him. You, an honest developer working hard 
to improve your IAP conversions. Your competitor, a $2 million a year scam running rampant. Yep. Over the years, I've worked incredibly hard to create what I think is the best Apple Watch keyboard app in the world. When I started, I had two gold. Well, you know, I believe I it became the top paid app of 2020. I failed to stay ahead of the competition, but not for reasons I anticipated. He got copied. First, they made an app that appeared to fulfill the promise of a watch keyboard, but was practically unusable. Then they started heavily advertising on Facebook and Instagram and using my own promo video of my own app with my actual name on it. Um, and you have to pay. It's a 400, because it, you, you can't really use the app until you pay for it. The ends up being $416 a year. Yeah, it's so gross. A year, they keep getting five-star reviews because Costa says they're fake. He yeah. says it's obvious they're fake because the app doesn't work once you pay for it. And yet all these people saying, oh, it's great. I uh, really like it. Doesn't work. Um, fake ratings, fake reviews quickly push the scams to the top of the search results, leaving honest and hardworking developers in the dust. And he says, "This is it's not just me. There are hundreds of these. This happens all the David time. Barnard, Why doesn't Apple fix this? How come Apple can't fix this? David Barnard has been beating this drum for years as well. He did a great job over this week surfacing like articles from Gruber from like 2018 <sighs> talking about the desperate need for a bunko squad on the App Store because there are so many scams. And they're even worse now than they used to be because they're taking advantage of something that shouldn't exist, which is like weekly subscriptions. There's very little need for like any weekly app. Weekly is terrible. Want a yeah. weekly subscription. And they, Apple has made tiny bits of progress. Like they made it harder for you to be tricked into tapping the wrong thing to authorize them and the little things like that. But just the the amount of compu of pure scam apps on the App Store, they seem to come in waves and surges. And I don't know what Apple is doing, but obviously it is not effective. And I don't know why this isn't like, a huge glowing neon priority because Apple's whole thing is faith in the app store. That's the whole promise of the app store is that it is a safe, trusted place for you to spend money, you know, whether that's in-app purchases or direct payments for apps. And this totally destroys all of that good faith equity that they've built. Sorry. I'm is that app? No, it's really terrible. I feel so bad for Costa. Is that app still up? But there's so many of them. Like anytime there was a popular game or something, it would get cloned and there'd be a scam yeah. version of it. And any category, there's all these scam apps that all they do is rope you into what looks like a small... Like First of all, I don't know why people pay subscriptions for this stuff. I will never victim blame, but this stuff is not worthy of your subscription money. And then they try to obfuscate the fact that it's a weekly subscription. And I don't know who's falling for it, but there seems like based on their sales, a massive amount of people falling for these things and it does become incumbent on the platform to protect us from ourselves at a certain point well a scam app should never appear on the platform and even even if they don't have the resources to police all of them any of the apps in any of the top lists should be routinely scrutinized like daily scrutinized because there's just not that many in the top list so i i should say that uh a week ago apple did in fact take it down the all that uh, twitter activity uh, brought that to their attention but they didn't take down their developer account and they have another scam called gps speedometer which is also 200 dollars a month um and it's it's just crazy yeah, it's uh, gross 200 yeah. 200 thousand dollars a month they're making on it i'm sorry yeah it, it does it does feel like they've got enough data to track to, to basically <laughs> have a scam apps like these trigger warnings that get escalated immediately to a human review that if you have a, some if you have an app that's a watch app particularly that's that's charging and a relatively enormous amount of money per week that gets immediately checked out by a real life human being to see exactly what's going on there yeah this there's, there's app any any company that is uh, trying to sell thousands upon thousands upon thousands of items in a store, they have a certain amount of cover here, saying that look, we we don't ha we have an automated system for submitting. We can't simply human review every single app, or else we will never be able to get people, for, uh, developers, to get their stuff on the app store. But nonetheless, when you have enough metrics to say this should <laughs> this person th th this person who's working at McDonald's and making one dollar over minimum wage per hour seems to own a lot of boats for some reason. Perhaps we should 
should find out if 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 they're they've got their their hands on anything else uh, in the corporate structure. This is then this is the similar sort of thing, I think. So a couple of proposals. Uh, one obvious one is to Marco Arment suggests to just eliminate the weekly subscription billing option. Yep. Uh, Dave Barnard uh, posted part of this is Apple's fault because they don't give you the information you know, in a clear way to understand what you're paying for. He suggests redesigning the buy sheet uh, so that it's clear that, it, you know, 10 bucks a week and, uh, you know, it's it's going to, it's you get a three-day trial. I mean, it's, it's, it needs to be more clear. They do it with the, the privacy uh, statements. They should do this with the subscription statements too. Are those you know, you know what I, Say again? <laughs> So are those better? Because those are also self-reported. So we're relying on these companies to to. Oh be yeah, part of the in fact, yeah, in fact, Jeffrey Fowler, your colleague, did a really good job, I think, of tracking down how many people lie on their privacy label, like <laughs> most of them, apparently. I was just shocked that there was no. It's I guess it's like a spot check system, and that might also be the case here. Just the pure volume of of stuff in the app store means. It's done by spot check or if it's flagged. But Andy, I like the idea of anything is making a certain amount of money that that should raise your little flag. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the other thing that, that occurred to me is that just like math. If, if you if you if you go to the market, uh, you're trying to figure out how much something actually costs. There is actually by mandate not only here is the here is the here is the price of the thing, but here is the price per unit. And I think that in addition, in that little table of, of, of price information on App Store, it should basically say, here's how much this costs per year of operation. And if it costs $5.99 and you own it outright, it will say $5.99 forever. If it's if you're charging by the month, it will say, here's that times 12. If you're charging by the week, here's that times 52. Uh, that's just, it seems as though in, uh, an easy first step and yet another indication that Apple, I don't think that Apple doesn't care. I just think that the, the App Store is such a big business for them that they really haven't planned on how difficult it's going to be to manage it. And so they aren't managing it very well. Yeah. And there's a tricky thing about how Apple manages your subscriptions because it's it's all lumped together. And if you look at your credit card statement, That's there's right. one charge. You don't and see it. And it takes an extra step to go see what everything is That's unless you have point. the emails yeah. turned on. That's a good point. So it's kind of a surprise. We talked about uh, Jeffrey's uh, really good work on uh, the privacy statements last week. Is there an update, Heather? Has Apple responded? Have, have you seen any movement in, in that, or is I don't think so. Not that I've heard about. Um, I yeah. know he's he's staying on top of that. Um, the we talked about the satisfying slime simulator, which says <laughs> it gathers no information, but in fact, it shares with Facebook, Google, and Game Analytics. The Unity software it uses provides. The, the inform not only your phone's ID, but your battery level, free storage space, general location, and volume level. He, he contacted the satisfying slime simulator. And uh, as, as of this article, which was on the 29th of January, he hadn't heard back. I, I hope that he shakes that tree and, and, it, and it produces some fruit. Maybe Apple should. Of course, the threat is if Apple does catch you, you're gone. But well, this thing, like this thing, is like brand new, and I'm gonna, I'm, I'm expecting yeah. that everyone is gonna be terrible at it, even Apple, like especially Apple. But the Bunko scam apps are like five years old. Yeah, I think, that like, one's any been. Goodwill and hope yeah. for them getting their act together is long past. Somebody posted the the Gruber link from 2018. Yeah, I mean, uh, that's that's almost that's two years ago. That should that should have been fixed by now. There's something that Apple already to, like, does have in place they could use. I mean, they have this whole team that does the, uh, the editorial side of reviewing apps and writing them up. Um, five five apps we looked at this week. And if if they could find a way to sort out things they've actually looked at versus things that were just sort of uploaded on their own, that would make the App Store so much more usable and useful to people. And it's also like it, the Apple theoretically unified the App Store. Like before it was split between multiple different organizations, which meant that a lot of stuff was just not their problem. Not that they didn't want it, but they just assumed somebody else was handling it. And then Phil Schiller became head of the App Store, but he's really head of the App Store app and the U.S. App Store. And all the international app stores are still run by Eddie Q's organization. And even beyond that, like a lot of the business infrastructure has been moved around. So like... I think it's it's a huge problem, but it's also one that's just never, never had that, that that one person whose job it is to wake up in the morning and see what developers and users are angry about and to make sure that all they do that day is fix anything that people are upset about. 
it's pretty much an endless battle to eliminate scammers from the world. It's just full of them. But you got to make them work harder, Leo. You got to make them yeah, think make of new harder. scams at yeah. least. Make it a little harder. At, at the very minimum, you should drive them towards the Android platform where, where they belong, really. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Go get on the Play Store. It's so much better for you. R really, Google could use the revenue in, all, in their in their uh, their annual reports. Yeah. <laughs> or just progressive web apps. Push them all back. right. <laughs> I think it's time for our picks of the week. Um, let's start a picks of the week with uh, our guest Heather Keller. So great, Kelly. So great to have you from the Washington Post, San Francisco-based tech report. Er, er, <laughs> er. At Heather Kelly on the Twitter. What do you? Have so I've never seen how you guys do this. You want me to just tell you my pick of the week? Yeah, I know what it is because I use it also, and I loves it. I, so I discovered this recently when writing an article about subscriptions, which is obviously a passion of mine because I'm boring. <laughs> Um, and the app is called <laughs> Truebill, and it, it kind of goes through, you, you link it to your credit card accounts and your bank accounts, and it will pick out what the reoccurring statements are. And this just does something that I've been annoyed for years that Mint doesn't do. Like, tell me what ridiculous things are monthly yes. or annual. And, and can cancel, cancel them, them for me. It can do that. And it also has a cool thing, which doesn't really apply to me, but it, it can try and negotiate some of your bills down. Yeah, I, I've never used it, and I was curious if you had, because... It doesn't... So it has a list right now of things it can negotiate down, and a lot of them are big-name cable companies, but, like, I use Monkey Brains here, which is a small ISP, and they very amusingly have the New York Times and the Washington Post on there, so if you'd like to negotiate down your subscription, <laughs> you could do that. Um, I don't think they'd appreciate it if I tried that. Yeah. Hey, can you... Can, you, can I pay less for my free subscription? <laughs> Exactly. It seems like I'm paying too much. But no, you know what? Look at these are some of them. You paid, I don't even, I'm embarrassed to even show this, but a huge amount of money to Verizon Wireless. That seems a bit high. We've seen 85% success rate negotiating bills like this. So I, you know, I don't know. I just like the reporting, I like the information. And I, I agree with you, Heather, just knowing that you've got a subscription uh, it helps a lot. Because um, we've all been signing up for so yeah. many, like, yeah. Free trial. I mean, yeah. one day Apple TV is going to charge me and I want to know about it. I knew that Netflix increased uh, my uh, bill because they actually told me. Bill increase. Netflix increased by a buck. Bill increase. Audible increased by a buck. Bill increase. Google Fi increased by 31 cents. I don't know why that is. T-Mobile went up. So, uh, you know, foreign transaction fee. I'm going to have to check that one. I wonder what that is. Uh, so these are, this is, you're, you're right. I use... Um, a mint-like tool called Personal Capital, same idea, and uh, but Truebill does give you, gives you information you don't get. Now, do you feel? I worry always when I see these because I, for a long time, I used Unroll Me for getting rid of um, email subscriptions, and then I found out they were going through all my Gmail and doing nefarious things with it. Um, do you trust Truebill? I mean, do I trust anybody? No, no. I no. talked. I talked to the founder. Um, oh, did you? Oh, good. And. It seems a little more on the up and up because I did look at a few of these to pick the one that I, I kind of wanted to mention in the story. I mean, the problem is you're giving anybody access to your bank account. And if you talk to the banks, they'll tell you that these apps are pinging your account constantly throughout the day when you're not even using it. Uh, so it's always a risk to to let somebody have that information. But I'm cheap and just want to save some money. So, uh, And they do use Plaid or one of those back end services. So it's not like they're holding your credentials. Truebill doesn't hold the credentials. They use a third-party service, which is the same service the banks use. So they already know all this stuff anyway. Everybody already knows everything about Every, us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Your your article uh, is uh, in the Washington Post came out, uh, I think, last week or the week before. Um, had a, And it covers all of these. So uh, that's a, I, I think that's a great tip. And I actually have been, I've never mentioned it because I, I didn't do the the good work that you did researching its its you know origin stuff, but I've been very happy with it. And I it's I, big on TikTok too. Is They're, it big? They on spend a lot of advertising dollars, so ah. everybody on TikTok is like, I'm really sick of ah. Truebill ads. There you go. I should watch less TikTok. Andy and Ako, pick of the week. Very very simple app. Uh, it's called Battery Buddy. You can get it at BatteryBuddy.app, and all you need to know about it is its tagline. It's like imagine the 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 MacBook battery indicator, but cute. Uh, 
<laughs> so, meaning that, so it's a battery indicator, but instead, but and it works it the way cute. that you think it is with high to low. But it has a cute little face, it's so that smile. when it's fully charged, it's smiling. When it's sort of halfway through, it's just sort of like non-committal. When it's down, it's like sort of frowny. But then when you plug it, when you plug it in and it's charging again, it smiles again. And I'm, I'm sorry. It's, it's That's all it does, is, this, by the way, right? There's this nothing is aspirational else. for the power of creative computing to basically put something onto people's desktops. It's hysterical. So it's free. It works. It, it gives you, if it gives you a fractional amount of additional joy, well, that's some joy you did not have over the course of the day. And so I'm completely, completely supportive of it. Also, the other cool thing is that uh, it, through his Twitter feed and also through the app itself, uh, I did not know that uh, menu icons can actually animate. So if you, when you, if, when you when you plug in to a source of power, it actually animates the plug uh, appearing uh, on the on the indicator. So this is this is really really adorable. I'm, I'm just afraid. Uh, I'm sorry there isn't a you know here's an address to send a small box of money to this developer because I would I would like to send a small box of money to this developer just to encourage this mind to complete to to con continue to divert itself into cool apps I can install on my Mac. By the way, Heather, I forgot to mention, and I, I think this is good news, that the Post has hired eight new tech reporters. Oh, thank you. Hey, guys, we're hiring. It's uh, a couple editors, mostly reporters, DC, SF, um, and we're casting a wide net. So if anybody wants to apply. And they'll all work for boss. you, right? You'll be the boss, right? N no. So I've, I've been a boss before, and I've decided I don't ever want to Never. be a boss. <laughs> Never, ever, ever. Andy, I think, might agree with me. It's, it's just a much happier existence. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I, I I like to I, I prefer to be the causer of stress, not the person <laughs> who receives the stress. It's, it's and Heather, a subtle if, thing. It, I'm just I'll just throw this out there: if the Washington Post ever wants a podcast network, it would be a very easy uh, acquisition. <laughs> yeah. I mean, let Jeff know he's got some. Free just time. tell I Jeff think. to send me that bigger box of cash. money. Yeah, <laughs> in in flight entertainment for Blue Origin. There you go. Yeah, when you're going you into you space, for less than an Instagram. you need Mac Break Weekly. Renee Ritchie, pick of the week. So mine is entirely self-serving this week because I finally finished my first Nebula original, which is a slightly longer form, slightly more involved video. And in this case, I decided to interview and put together a bunch of YouTube creators talking about the influence the iPhone had had on them personally and professionally from the original keynote to how they first, the first iPhone they got, their favorite iPhones, how they use it in their daily lives, in their careers, and what they want to see from it next. And it ended up being a 20 minute video that took a very long time, but I am very, very happy with it. There was no question that was a. Oh, you interviewed Marquez. Nice. We're going to make some history together. You interviewed today. Steve? The iPhone oh, really Justine. has changed I mean, my life in so many ways. It was the keynote. Every Gruba. Apple fan had always wanted Apple to deliver. Nice. The one single thing that's had the absolute biggest impact on my life and the lives of so many creators in the tech space, if not the world, began on January 9, 2007. So all you have to do is uh, go to uh, uh, watchnebula.com. And uh, as you can see, I'm not signed in. Uh, and uh, you can sign up what is there a cost to this yeah it's i forget what it is i think it's five dollars a month but if you sign up for curiosity stream which is like oh. fifteen dollars a year you get nebula for free oh nice oh curiosity yeah, so stream like, is very affordable com slash renee ritchie do they um, then you get both of them do they own is it the same company no, so Nebula is a bunch of us creators started Nebula as a way right. to, to create videos that wouldn't do well on Neb on um, YouTube. But CuriosityStream loves educational content, and we're primarily educational YouTubers. So we we worked out this deal where we would sort of co-promote, uh, and it's worked out really, really well for us. Yeah, and a good deal with uh, CuriosityStream. That's great. And I made very, very deliberately and surely that it is not a video filled with just a bunch of white dudes again. So there is a wide assortment of people. There is at least background. one woman and one black guy, I, I noticed. No, there's 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 a, yeah. <laughs> and there's it, a grouper. And we have people who are talking about accessibility oh, and about good. all of the different facets oh, of, good. of what it meant to a wide, wide range of creators. That's actually a challenge, isn't it? Because um, uh, everybody uses iPhones and there's all sorts of ways. Yeah. Same thing with the Apple Watch. There's all sorts of different ways people use it and... Find value, Andrew right? Edwards and Jacqueline Dallas oh, and nice. Carolina Milanese talks about analysts, especially because she was in Europe at the time. So she, and, and it was Nokia everything. And it's 
and how her daughter's second word was iPhone, not mama. It was data, then iPhone. <laughs> oh, that's and depressing. Mama. <laughs> that's really, really depressing. <laughs> but it's just wonderful stories from a wonderful group of people. Nice. Well, that's it for Mac Break Weekly. Speaking of a wonderful group of people, so nice to have you, Heather Kelly, The Washington Post. Is there anything you want to plug? You got a podcast? Anything you want to talk about besides the fact I that you're hiring? I, I don't have a podcast. I, I write articles and I yell at children. And then sometimes I, I come on and talk on other people's podcasts. Are your kids work in school at home? I guess they are. Well, there's one somewhere behind me playing with Legos um, and then one in daycare. Oh, OK. So there's too little to be in school yet. Well, there's no school right now. One is technically in the first grade, which is oh. my living room. Must be hard. <laughs> I really, you know, it's... I know they're trying in California to get kids back in schools, but teachers are going, what are you talking about? We're still purple. Um, must be so hard. Um, I mean, I have it easy. I can, we can write together and both hate writing together. And <laughs> remember this time. <laughs> well, remember this time with fondness when mother taught us never to become a writer. <laughs> Thank you, Heather. Great to have you again. We really appreciate it. Anytime. Andy Anako, WGBH, Friday. Uh, uh, I get the week off because uh, a president is going to be impeached again. I'm I'm very happy to. I don't I don't like uh, skipping a week, but I'm always happy to make that sacrifice with uh, when these things come up. Uh, so hopefully you'll see us next week. Uh, and so uh, until then, wgbhnews.org. If you search on my name, you'll see all my tech segments. So usually usually Fridays at about one o'clock. Wgbhnews.org. Of Andy has a wonderful show he does with Florence Ion called Material at Relay. Yes. F M. It's Google all the way down, which is more than I could say for our show this week in Google, <laughs> which is has less Google all the time. Relay.fm oh, thank, slash material. Thank, thank God for that podcast. I, I've, I've, I've learned more. I've had to learn more about about uh, about employment law, about the oh, EU, yeah. about regulations. Unionizing. Be, because, of all the, yeah. because of all the trouble that Google gets itself in, it's I'm reading a lot more PDFs than I once did. It's kind That's of amazing. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's kind of amazing. And now there's a big brouhaha because the new Ford all-electric vehicle, the Mach-E, causes it has uh, android auto in it but every time you you put your android 11 phone in the car it re goes into a boot loop <laughs> and uh oh, i think it might i don't know is it google is it ford i don't know okay uh, okay but you know you, you put the new iphone in your shirt pocket and it turns your heart defibrillator off let's just that's true let's just say that to there be are fair there's a negative there, there are degrees fair, to these things, right? hard. your pacemaker can be turned <laughs> off by an iphone so there you go <laughs> Uh, Renee Ritchie, well, we gave you a big plug, and I'm hoping everybody yes, will go see that wonderful uh, show, uh, watchnebula.com. Renee Ritchie uh, on YouTube, youtube.com slash Renee Ritchie, the talk show that he does with uh, Georgia Dow. Anything else you want to mention? No, that's it. Uh, it's, You're busy it's enough. It's just fun being here with you. every. No, it's just fun being with people every week like this. I just enjoy this show <laughs> yes, so much. It's the best we can do. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> it's the most people we can be with. It's keeping me time. human. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I appreciate it. It's great to have all three of you. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, we do Mac Break Weekly of a Tuesday morning, 11 a.m. Pacific, 2 p.m. Eastern Time, 1800 UTC. I mentioned that time not because you have to watch then, because, of course, it's a podcast, so you can download it at your convenience and watch or listen at your leisure. But But there is a live stream that you can watch so if you want to watch us do it live you can it's kind of a behind the scenes video at twit.tv slash live there's audio and video there if you're watching or listening live chat live as well you can use all the different media our chat room is at irc.twit.tv on-demand versions of this show and all our shows available at the website twit.tv in this case twit.tv slash mbw for mac break weekly uh, there, there's the old team. We, we haven't had anybody in here to take new pictures. Lori has gone on, married and working for the fruit company. Alex Lindsay, though, will be back next week uh, uh, to take over his chair one more time. So we're happy to have Alex back on the show next week. Uh, we also have a YouTube channel, full-time. Watch all the Mac Break Weekly you can stomach at uh, YouTube.com. And uh, if you want to get the podcast, of course, you can download it at the website. But the easiest thing to do is to get a podcast uh, application and subscribe. Overcast, Pocket Cast, Apple Podcast, Google Podcast. MacBreak Weekly is everywhere. It's one of the oldest podcasts in the universe. 
You can subscribe, and then that way you'll get it automatically the minute it's available. Thanks, everybody, for being here. We'll see you next week on Mac Break Weekly. Bye-bye. Hey, folks, thanks for tuning in to another show here on the Twit Network. If you are a fan of home automation, Internet of Things, and all things smart technology, you should check out my podcast, Smart Tech Today. I do it with Matthew Casanelli, and we have so much fun talking about all the latest news for all things smart tech.